There's one thing you can do that will force you to grow as a person more than almost anything else. By the way, this is backed by lots and lots of data. What is that thing? Have children. Having kids makes you reflect on yourself. It forces you to grow into a better person or completely disconnect. Those of you that do that, shame on you. It is an incredible growth tool because for the first time in your life, you love something more than yourself. Yeah, a little controversial Ooh, this one. Yeah. Huh? I like Isn't that, that funny? This is controversial. <laughs> only yeah. because there's only because people still think that we're overpopulated. That's why. Okay, <laughs> that, yeah, I'm so that's, glad that's you said that. That's a factor for that's, sure. That's that the, is false. I, well, no, I it's beyond false. People don't realize. You how know false the, that the, is. I I was blown away by the uh, I don't know you call it a statistic or what, but when someone shared with me that we could literally fit like the entire world's population in mm. Texas. Yeah, yeah, with a population density that's less than like Tokyo. Yeah. Yeah. So people will say resources. So um, they're in the 70s, I want to say, there was this theory called, I want to say 70s or 60s, called peak oil, that we would uh, we were reaching a point where we could no longer get as much oil as we needed for energy demands, and the cost of retrieving it was going to exceed the benefit we're going to get from it, and then society would collapse. Today... We have access to more oil or more energy per person than we did back then, okay? Why innovation? Innovation has led to that. And people say, well, what about food? We produce more food per person today, even though it's a larger population, than we did 20, 30, 40, and definitely 50 years ago uh, and beyond. Why? Again, innovation. Um, and there's less people starving, less people sick, um, and all that stuff today than there were, you know, again, 30 years ago. Less people in the world is not a good thing. Uh, yeah, now I'm sure at some point we would reach potential limits, but the, the human ingenuity and innovation, that's like our greatest skill. Mm -hmm. So it's like right now, if we cut the population of the world in half, it would be a disaster. Like it would be an absolute disaster. People would starve and it would be terrible. More good people is a good thing. So this whole like we need to have less people type of thing, or it's it's totally false. It hasn't worked out. Well, wasn't it in reverse in some countries? Like they're actually noticing a decline in the population. In China, yeah. yeah, China, Japan, Europe is on the brink. Here we're getting close, and uh, that collapse can cause uh, that's actually can cause collapse. You know, it, it reminds me of like uh, when you, like uh, Western medicine where you have like one doctor that like looks at one like a symptom and then like it understands one part of the body, but then like the fact that everything works synergistically, yeah. they don't communicate. That's how I feel like when you, when you hear things that were like alarming that, Oh, we're overpopulated coming from like an environmentalist mm -hmm. based off of that, like, Oh, we're polluting the earth and we're going that direction. But it's like, yeah, but if environmentalists actually spoke to an economist and actually told you what would happen to our economy, if we actually did that, like you would understand like, oh, okay, so we, we, we shrank a little bit of the pollution by eliminating these people. But now what happens when our economy starts to tank because we have less people that's not growing, growing the GDP, that's not feeding the elderly population. There's more, there's more people that are dying off than being born. Like, do you have any idea what that would do to civilization yeah. with, with murder, suicide rate, all the stuff that would increase with all that stuff. A loss of innovation, productivity, but also <laughs> this is a lot of, this is also something people don't realize is that the wealthier people become, and this is a, a fact now, we can see this clearly, the uh, better they are uh, to the environment, the more they care about the environment. Because right. if you're dirt poor, you don't care. All you care about is I need it's food, survival, yeah. I need shelter, I'm going to burn this whatever I have, I don't care if it makes smoke, I'm going to throw stuff in the river, I don't care, we're starving right now, we just need to eat. Now when you make enough money and a society becomes wealthy enough to where people can think about these things, then they start to care. They start to innovate. They start to not worry so much about paying more for something that's more environmentally uh, conscious, for example. So like, you know, if we want to move in that direction, then we need prosperity, not to hammer people. Like, think about it this way. If you're starving and you're struggling, I, I don't care about electric, gas, coal, pollution. I don't care about that. I just need food right yeah. now. Yeah. And we need to survive right now. Well, so. also too, it's kind of a, a slow shift. Like we've seen this in programming with TV shows and everything growing up from kind of that shifting from the derpy kind of dad. And then like this, this idea that it's just better to, to be single and just bang all the chicks and yeah. have this Peter Pan syndrome. And like, that's just a better lifestyle in general. And that's been like programmed. Well, like, along those lines, you know, you know what else is true about the, the more wealthy we become too, is the less 
likely you are to have kids, which yeah. is unfortunate because you're you're more equipped to probably raise more children, yet you're less likely to have children. It's kind of backwards when you think about it. Yeah, well, there's a trade-off, and <clears throat> the trade-off is um, hedonistic value versus, I guess, meaning and maybe purpose. So you, you t men are a great exa easy example because uh, theoretically men don't have a biological clock like women do. So women – there's a biological clock that kind of can force them to have to make decisions sooner than men. Men, technically we can have kids whenever, up until the day we die, obviously not ideal, but we don't lose our fertility. And so we kind of don't, like, unless we have children, we don't really have a reason to grow up. And so we tend to live that way. We have kids, all of a sudden you think about things differently. It's not about you. You got, okay, you know, I know I do these things that are bad for me. Now I really got to look at them because I don't want my kids to do the same thing. I don't want my daughter to date someone who does these things. So it kind of forces you to take responsibility, to grow. You're not going to be so driven by hedonism because you find value in different things. So now, is it harder? Is it more expensive? Yeah, it is. But usually harder things are better for you. I mean, that's just, that's just the, the you know, the way it is. And this, and again, the data is very clear on this. Having children for, and now, now the people are going to, point out like terrible examples. Oh, these people shouldn't have kids and these, yeah, yeah, I get that. By the way, I'm not talking to you deadbeats out there. Don't have kids if you're a moron um, and you don't want to take care of them <laughs> and you're a loser. Yeah. You should probably just worry about taking care of yourself yeah. for now. But for most people, the, the data shows like having children is a, it's harder for sure. I'm not going to lie. It's definitely harder, but it's a, a net positive and it provides a value that like, did you realize that you didn't love anything more than yourself until you had kids? I didn't no, realize it. No. That was one of the biggest realizations I had. Yeah. It's interesting how we're we're actually genetically hardwired for that, right? <clears throat> I was listening to the interview with uh Zuby and Elon Musk and he's talking about, you know, having children and, and and like how it's a it's in our genetic code and how it could take and he used the example of like wild animals He's talking about like a bobcat or like the most fierce like wild animal that would like kill and eat and and destroy anything that it could feed on in front of it and stuff like that and was is this fierce animal yet that same animal all of a sudden can have kittens or sure. uh, uh, have children and all of a sudden that their demeanor becomes this protective caring loving like it's weird and it's not like somebody trained that animal to do that it's like in its genetic makeup mm. to to do that and we're hardwired the same way and you don't, it's, it's innate. You don't really realize it until it happens. You can think about it all you want and go like, oh yeah, I hear this, or I've been taught this, or I've seen this. But I mean, from my experience, uh, from somebody who almost didn't have kids to having kids, it's like, it's so, it's so weird how everything that you, that you thought you, you knew about your purpose and what you cared about also like changes com completely shifts yeah. and changes and gets upended because for the first time in your life, you actually have something that you truly love more than yourself. A lot of people think that, oh, I love my mom. Oh, I love my wife. Oh, I love my husband. I love these other. And then all of a sudden you have a kid and you realize, oh, fuck. Like, there's a whole different level. Yeah, there's a whole other level to this. So, you, And that doesn't mean you can't really love your wife and all those other people. But then when you actually have a child, it's, it changes completely. Yeah, the, the, um, I heard this talk <laughs> once about um, children. It really impacted me. It's like you have an opportunity. By the way, what you just mentioned, I want to say this too before I go on. What you mentioned is why some people run away. because And, and, and men are definitely much more likely to do this. It's because it's scary. It's the most responsible you'll ever have to be if you actually want to step up and take care of this thing and raise them. Um, and so some people are like, I can't, I, I'm out. I can't handle this. So um, it is a scary thing. Mm -hmm. But here's, this is, here's the talk that I heard that I thought was so impactful. It's like, you have the opportunity to develop the, the deepest possible relationship you could ever develop ever. Okay. Uh, like you'll never have this opportunity with a friend or anyone else. Like you're going to have, you have this opportunity to raise a human being from birth <clears throat> and develop the deepest, most profound relationship you can develop. And then the kicker is that kid wants that more than anything. They want that more than anything. So t tell me how you can find that anywhere else in the world. And if you, if you don't pursue that um, or you shut it down, because why? Because it's expensive, because that means you have to go to bed early, it means you can't party with your friends, you can't buy a fast car or whatever. Like uh, that's not a, tr a great trade. It really isn't. One of the greatest regrets, by the way, of people when they on their 
on their deathbeds are people without kids. One of the greatest re regrets is that they didn't have kids. Or so if it's them. so amazing and it gives so much purpose, makes you such a better person, then why is it not promoted anymore like that? Why is, why, what is, what was the biggest shift in say like the forties to like now on why it, it isn't? All, very simple. Look mm. at the spending and consumption habits of people with kids versus people without kids. And you'll see a vast difference. Talk about um, like consuming, you know, um, worthless things or purchasing lots of so things. So based on consumerism so based in general. So based yeah. off of your yeah. theory, most massive companies that are in, in in the business of selling product to people are in favor of you being single and wealthy than you being a family with four or five kids living conservative. Yes. And that's not it. That's not because look, when you have, and even kids, if it's subconsciously, they're driven that way, right? Yeah. Well, think about it. Like, Cause like, they're about profits. Yeah. Like when you had kids uh, or you had max, I mean, your consumption habits and uh, look, objectively <laughs> yeah, you have, look, here's the <laughs> <Could> funny you, <laughs> thing. It's, I hope you don't mind me sharing this. You have far more expendable income today, even with your kid than you did five years ago when he didn't, when he didn't exist yeah. um, without him, yet your spending habits completely changed. It wasn't because you made less money. You're, You're way more wealthy now than you were then. Drives my wife crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it changes everything, right? <laughs> right? I know, isn't that funny? Uh, she's like, I don't understand you. She's like, the more money you make, the more of a miser you become. Yep. That has nothing to do with that. It has yeah. nothing to do with the income going up. It has everything to do with uh, having a child for yeah. the first time again. Every, every decision I made financially pre five years ago was selfish. Mm -hmm. oh, what do I want now? What do I want later? What does that look like? Like, and so all of my decision making was based off of that. As soon as you have a child that completely gets disrupted. Now it's like, all I care about is his future. And so the way I spend has to change. It just has to, because it's no longer selfishly motivated. It's more predicated on how does this impact him? Everything from him seeing me blow money like that. Is that good for him to see or us or me giving him all those things? Does that, mm -hmm. does that matter? Or me also setting his financial future up or teaching him good money lessons. Like now all of a sudden those factors all play a, a, a major role in my decisions where that didn't exist before. Right. You're, you're also harder to um, <clears throat> manipulate in particular ways um, by politicians and again, mm -hmm. by marketers. Because uh, when you have kids, your values start to change. Look, you're far more likely to do harmful shit to yourself than you would allow your own children to do. So, like, you take somebody, let's say, who, you know, smokes cigarettes, right? And you're like, well, you know, you should stop. Ah, whatever. I enjoy it, whatever. And you ask them, would you want your kids to develop this habit? Hell no. Yeah. No, I don't. Yeah. So, it, 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 makes it, hard, it makes it harder for you to be manipulated because now you're considering – people that you treat better than you treat yourself, or at least you're more conscious of how to treat them in a better way than you are for yourself. And I know there's a lot of men out there, especially, in fact, I was talking to one yesterday where he had a kid young and he's like, you know, what now when I do certain things, I ask myself like, cause he has a daughter and he says, now when I, when I do things, I ask myself, w w am I acting like the man I would want my daughter to mm -hmm. be with? Mm -hmm. And he says, this totally motivates me. To be a I mean, person, I, I, that's how I answer. Like when someone asks me, like, what's the biggest difference in your life uh, having a kid? Uh, there's lots of different things, right? But the biggest thing, and it's, it's cheesy to say this, right? Remember when the uh, the WWJD thing was really popular? What would Jesus do? <laughs> oh, you know, yeah, the wristbands. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Remember that? I What goes through my head is like, what would my son think, right? Yeah. With, with every aspect, everything from how I talk to my wife, uh, what money spending decisions I make, what kind of career I decide to do, like- that just goes through, the, and it's like uh, it's not like I actively have to think about it. I don't like to stop and like, oh, should I partake yeah. in this? What would my? It's there. It's just there. So, I, is you think that's something that that we all have, or is hardwired in, or is it something that just because uh, I thought about fatherhood, I think about them more? Or do you, do you think that's something that everybody? I think it's both. Uh, I think that there's a hard wiring there, but also, <clears throat> of course, your own past trauma, your fear. All that stuff can step in and people can run away or be terrible uh, people and not, you know, want to be there for their kids. But generally speaking, um, having kids tends to just drive those things. It tends to make us a, a little bit different or consider it's, it, when you care about your kids, I should say. And, and look, you know, I know there's, like I said, there's a lot of bad people out there and this is the argument people try to make, but most people care. 
they nobody's perfect, by the way. I know I'm far from perfect. So, um, you know, I hate that when people criticize people who talk about having kids like, well, you're not a great, you know, perfect parent because whatever, like, don't be an asshole. Nobody's perfect. But generally speaking, um, this is the case. Just like generally speaking, parents know what's best for their kids. I hate it when, when people try to make that argument like, you don't know what's best for your kids. The, the state knows better. The teachers know better. The doctor knows better. Mm -hmm. nah, most, of the most of the times they don't. Sometimes they do, but usually that's not the case. You know, I was actually thinking about this topic and I was thinking about, um, and I, I always think of you when, you, uh, when I think like this, like evolutionary, like why, why is it that, you know, and, and I understand the biological reasons why, you know, because women have a clock on, as far as how long they can have children, that it's more advantageous for us to have children at younger ages when I think statistically mm. we are, it's we're, it's, we're far better having children as we, as men, as we get older. So it's kind of weird that as a society that we've, I don't know what the average age that somebody has children, but it's in this probably 20, 20 something year old age. When I would make the case that when you're in your mid thirties to 40, it, you, you raise a better kid, you're more prosperous. Like you can feed them better. You can take care of them better. You mm -hmm. can teach them better. So do you think that we are going to evolve in that direction? Like, do you think that the, 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 as we get healthier and we had technology and science evolves, like, will we go from the average age that a woman has a child? It was at, let's say, I don't know, maybe look that up for me, Doug. So I'm not just spouting off random numbers, but let's say it's 25 or 27. Does that move to 33 in our lifetime or like a later age? And like, we start to slowly evolve to having children. We have to even. figure out how to, how to make that happen. Um, because is it, is it happening or is it going the other direction? Do you know? The age is going up because, um, uh, the, the, the strongest tie to that is uh, women are pursuing more education and careers and then deciding to have children um, <coughs> later on. I mean, that's a whole nother discussion, like what's the right age or whatever. I think there's an emotional maturity that uh, men don't reach at the same age that women do. Yeah. Well, well, here's what I thought, Sal, not to interrupt this you. This might but be like, why you see older men and younger women. So, it made, so to me, it made sense hundreds of years ago when uh, it was all about physical so hundreds of years ago, before we had all this technology, and it was about if I had a kid, it would be best in my best interest to have a kid when I was 25 to 30, when I'm right. in my prime. I'm strongest, I'm fastest, I have the most energy to keep them protected when that was like the main way to raise and take care of a family. So it made sense having children much earlier in those times. But we, in, a, in a short period of time, when you talk about 100 years, that's nothing in, in the grand scheme of things. Like in the last 100 years, that's completely shifted. Like I don't have to go out and fight off something to try to attack my family well, in that, like you used to. The, the, the way you do it now is through educating them, financially providing for them, a, a social, a socially taking care of them, psychologically being there for them. Like it's a different, it's a different so, war. So the way it would work in the past was um, more like this. Uh, not so much how young and physically able you are as a man, that plays a role, but rather your status in the tribe or society. So... An older man who survived, uh, like this is this is why men with scars on their face are considered more attractive. And so it shows he lasts, he has some resources. And what they did was the older man would continue to have kids with, with uh, younger women. So he'd have this wife and they'd have kids. She would reach a certain age and he'd have another, another wife as long as he had the resources and the, and the status. Yeah. So it wasn't so much about his physical prowess, although that played that also plays a role. It was more like, this is why his sense of humor, they think, is such a... Good luck selling Courtney on that, yeah. Justin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was starting to try to figure this out. <laughs> yeah. This is hilarious. Well, honey, my resources are going up. You know what I'm saying? Resources now. <laughs> You're not getting any younger. No. You know? oh, more yeah. intelligent. Yeah, I don't think I'm a pitcher on that. Yeah, you don't want to do that, <laughs> No, I mean we can talk about that too. Is why it's more beneficial. <laughs> Monogamy seems to work out much better. <laughs> Where are we going with this? Yeah, <laughs> much much better. But anyway, but yeah, it's uh, the the whole like um, the message out there is that having kids sucks. It's expensive. It's hard. Your days of fun are over. Yeah, you know, life sucks. And that's like all media. Like there's no movies or anything to depict it the other way. Um, and then when they do depict that, dads, they make us look like morons. Um, but that's not the case, man. It's I mean, I, I hope that's one of the things that we're changing. I, I want to make being a dad cool again. I think that yeah. I wish, I wish I had more people that I looked up to in whatever space or thing I was into that promoted that. Cause I, we definitely, I feel like the nineties was like 
Fast cars, yeah. bang lots of chicks, yeah. make lots of money, yachts like that. Al Bundy was an example, or or that right. Uh, so either you're or Homer Simpson. Or, no, that's or a good example. Stupid. You're either super smart, successful, single, lots of women, yeah. and not not family guy, Wolf of or you're family guy. You're fat. You're dumb. And you're and yeah. you're and you're and you're drinking beer, sitting watching TV at the yeah. house. Like it's and, and like talking about how great life used to be. Yeah. Yep. Hundred. Yeah. Talking about high school. Yeah, talking about high school yeah. football you played or some yeah. shit. You know what I'm saying? You know what's funny too is that men Yikes. know this. Men know this instinctively. They don't like like man. Listen to me right now, right? So think about a scenario. In fact, I talked about the guy I was talking about with the young dad. I told him the scenario. We were, we we're talking about it. Imagine this. Imagine you had two two men. One guy, single, money, sleeping around with lots of women or whatever. The other guy, also successful, lots of money, can sleep around, but chooses to be loyal to his wife. Mm -hmm. Who do you actually respect more? And most men will be like, actually, it's the dude that's loyal. 100%. It's, it's no different than this. It's no different I, than the fighter who could whoop the correct. shit, who could whoop the shit out of somebody who doesn't versus the guy who goes and picks fights with everybody. I, so I had that yes. happen to me once. When I used to train in jiu-jitsu, I, I went to a bar with, with a bunch of my buddies and a couple of them were pro fighters. Like these guys could wipe the floor with anybody. Mm -hmm. And I remember we went to a bar and some drunk jerk was totally taunting one of my buddies and eventually <clears throat> tried to start a fight. And my buddy stepped back and this guy could have easily like, Easily could have handled him, right? right? He could have beat him up and ate a sandwich at the same time. It would have been, it would have been embarrassing. But what did he do? He stepped back, and said, "Hey, man, listen, I don't want any trouble. Let me buy you." A drink. And he was totally like, "Yeah." And I remember respect totally calm and and collected. Bro, I yeah. respected him so much. Like, oh my, like way more than if he had kicked his ass. If he had kicked his 100%. ass, I would like, yeah, right, right. And that it shows restraint. A hundred percent, it showed that. Today's program giveaway is Maps Aesthetic. Here's how you can win that program: leave a comment below this video in the first twenty four hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you do all those things and you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. We're also running a sale right now. Our beginner workout program, MAPS Starter, is 50% off. And then we have a bundle that includes MAPS Anabolic and MAPS Prime that's called the Starter Bundle. That's also 50% off. If you're interested, just click on the link uh, at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. You know, uh, speaking of kids, you see the latest TikTok trend? Is this the one where they're... This one's not bad. I'm, I, I can get behind this a little bit. Is it better than the Tide Pods? It is way better than the Tide Pods. I can get behind this. It's the, 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 They're taking like the... the salt and honey. Yeah, salt and honey shots. Before workout. Yeah. There's actually some science to there support is. this one. There is. Why, that's why I'm, pro, I'm I'm way more for this than the gummy bear Sour Patch right. fucking yeah, crazy. Dextrose. Yeah, that's stupid. Yeah. I'm way more than the, the Tide Pods stupid yeah. thing they were doing. At least they're doing... Some, um, honey and salt are great yeah. for you. Sugar, sodium before you work out, you're yeah. probably going to get a little bit of a boost. And honestly, okay, so the same science that the people that were using the Sour Patch Kids like that, it, that is attached to the people that are using the honey. And yeah. that's a much better source. Yeah. If you're going to do that, so I actually, I'm, I'm totally for and it. It tastes good. I, don't know. I mean, so, when you sodium, think of, salt and honey, probably tastes good. Yeah, so that's probably. Well, probably, that, that's okay. Sugar, just like a pinch of salt. Sugar like and sodium. It? That's the same science that it was that made the you know what's Doctor Integrity push the sour kids yeah. thing. Okay. Yeah, sour patch kids. But one of the arguments, if you could probably go back and listen to that episode years ago that we did, was I, we probably said honey and salt. If I were to, if you if you want that, go do it. Through natural sources that are healthier and better for you, not all the all dyes and ultra I, I, preservative I wanna, bullshit. I, I want to add this though: for most people, sugar pre-workout uh, isn't necessary unless you're doing like these crazy long, grueling workouts. Most people have plenty of um, glycogen, glycogen reserves. Stores, yeah. Like, hardcore athletes definitely, but most people I'll, are fine. I'll make, but case, I'll make a case for somebody else. Who? If you're if you're in a a pretty hard restricted caloric yeah, deficit, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. if you if you're dieting pretty hard. Yeah, then it might make well, sense. Well, yeah, so I, I mean, I used to, I used to, carb yeah. yeah. So yeah, I used to really load carbs point. before my workouts because it made a significant difference. Now, where I'm at now, where I'm eating when I'm hungry and I eat whatever, yeah. right? Not a big difference. Doesn't make a big difference. But when I know I'm cutting, I used to be cutting for like a show or something, and I'd be depleted, 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 and then getting a nice surge of fifty to seventy grams of carbohydrates an hour before that workout. Yeah, it, makes a it, it made a big difference. Yeah, that's so special population. I would refer to like athletes. I just want to say that because I know somebody's going to try it. Some science dork, but average person clip you on TikTok. Yeah, and no, make it. No. <laughs> average person, this isn't going to make a difference. Uh, but the Aviators. sodium, the sodium might. The sodium probably yeah. will. Mm -hmm. Most people, uh, if unless you eat lots of heavily processed foods, you eat a garbage diet. But if you had a relatively he you know healthy diet, if you had like a, a packet of element right before your workout, like maybe 
not even 20 minutes before, 10 minutes before, because sodium gets utilized pretty quickly. If you had a packet of Element before your workout, you'll notice, most people notice some performance enhancements. In fact, yeah. the, have you guys seen all the DMs? Yeah, yeah, from people? yeah, no, for sure. People are like, I didn't realize that it would make this. So, I thought you were full of shit. <laughs> yeah. Maybe Doug can pull it up. I, who, one of you sent, I think I thought sent that in our thread. Did one of you send the the TikTok trend? Was it one of you? Who sent the TikTok trend? Oh, in? no. I don't. I mean, oh, maybe it was our, maybe it was Jerry. Yeah, yeah it. it was her. So Jerry. look look it up. I, what, I, what I don't know, and I haven't looked closely, is to see the amount that they're taking. Yeah. Because if you're taking this like little, That's little, what I mean, you know, they're not measuring it. No, I, it can't drop. possibly be as much as what's in element, no. right? There's no. no way. No, 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 no. You're getting a thousand milligrams with element plus some pot potassium and magnesium. How many tables or teaspoons of, of, of table salt is that? Like three? By the way, table salt is just sodium. There's no magnesium or potassium. There's right. No yeah. And there's a lot of so benefits that most, of what, six, over 60% of the population is deficient on magnesium. So yeah, the fact yeah. that you're getting something. But the that balance most, makes you utilize it better. Well, not just and that. That's mm -hmm. what I'm, so not only that, but then you add in the fact, too, that you're deficient. You're deficient and you'll feel a difference from yeah. that, too. Yeah, you know? yeah. So. Hey, we were talking earlier about families. I got to give you, I got to tell you guys about how Jessica approached is approaching potty training with Aurelius. I'm, I'm very fascinated in this, by the way. Dude, I'm, root, I'm, root, I was, I'm rooting for you, but I don't know if I believe this oh, is going to work. Hey, <laughs> hey. So it's called, I think it's called. Oh, there's a, na there's a, there's a name or a, a. Yeah, it's called Child Led. Oh, there you go, Doug. You're Doug's right. Yeah, me. Doug. You got to close your, hey, your uh, playlist is out again, huh? <laughs> Huh? Now it's looking at the TikTok huh? stuff. Don't lie, guy. <laughs> what was that? He's got back from Japan. Yeah, he's, yeah, uh, yeah. Still kind of, yeah. He's just clubbing <laughs> with him. There's a, there's a video of him. At the hey, did they? <laughs> did you see any of the panning machine vending machines while you were out there? Oh yeah. You know what? I look for them. Okay. Look for them? <laughs> <laughs> I I, I actually did. did. I, I I looked. Dirty I, Doug. You know, it used to be that you could buy alcohol on the street. You could go get beer, whiskey, right. even. Really. Out uh, wow. sake out of a vending machine. I didn't see any of those anymore. Sweet. So maybe they've removed a lot of those. Interesting. Mm. Yeah. They still have a lot of vending machines, but it's mainly like you know it didn't soda, even dawn on me ice cream. Till, till right like now, I was like, oh man, I wish I would have had Doug buy some for you. No, oh, oh, some dirty pants. <laughs> I don't need you to smuggle me dirty panties. It's okay, good. Oh. Okay, okay. I can find some local dirty oh. panties wow. if I need to. <laughs> You're very resourceful. I'll You're very, give you that. very resourceful. Yeah. Oh. 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 Thanks for sharing. Hey, what is it? Okay, no. So go ahead. Hey, hold on. Uh, I don't want training. you to get left on that. Okay, no, we, I, so it's called, I think it's called child led uh, potty training. I think it is. So she's talked to me about this uh, up until recently. And I'm, you know, I trust her. She's super intuitive with kids. She, she knows how to read them very well. And she's almost always right. So I trust her, even though I'm very skeptical. Right. So basically it's like, and I'm going to butcher it. Sorry, honey. She's going to tell me afterwards. I totally fucked it up. But anyway, it's like, don't make a big deal about it. Don't bring it up. Don't talk about it. You got to do potty here. You got to do that there. And when he does choose, we don't make a, we don't over celebrate. It's got to kind of be his idea. He needs to discover it. So I'm like, all right, whatever. Well, anyway, the other day he's in the bath and it happened. He goes, uh, mama, I got to go pee. And she mm. goes, oh, okay. Um, we got to wait till we get out of the bath. And he goes, but I, I need to go now. She goes, uh, well, you can go in the potty if you want. And nonchalantly, and I stayed silent because she coached me and he goes, okay. From that day forward now, he has now every day, has to go to the pee, he has to go be taken to the potty on his own. Wow. And we don't make this big celebration about it. It's like, he tells me, I'm like, wow, that's great, buddy. And I leave it at that because you're not trying to like overemphasize or underemphasize it. Yeah, yeah. It's got to be his idea. Yeah. There's no resistance. It's all him doing it on his own. So we're like on yeah. day three and like, uh, like, he, like he now tells Je Jessica when he needs to go to the bathroom. Now he hasn't done a poop in the bathroom yet, yeah. but that's coming. Right? So I have a theory on why that's successful for you. And then why did we do it? Why did all of a sudden we change? Right. Cause I thought about it when you brought it up the other day and you know, obviously I have max in school right now. So I've, you have a timeline. That's right. Yeah. And you, and at each grade he has gone up now. So we were, we've gone up now this is the second time. Where he's at, like uh, they, the school will only do so much. Mm. So he they, he has to be potty trained. Then it goes, he has to be able to wipe himself. So you have this timeline that you have to. So I bet 
historically before we had you know this school structure that we've had oh, only yeah, for a hundred years observation yeah it probably was smarter to like hey when the kid is when the time is time yeah when the time is time know, and yeah. he's starting to piece it together at his pace and you mm -hmm. don't make a big deal about it and you, oh oh yeah, good. it's probably so, a lot more natural that it's way. main it's more natural the problem probably with that is that that hits for some kids at two hits some kids at five mm -hmm. and that range and when you're on the school timeline oh if you have a kid at pre-k He's got to be able to do this. And then when he gets to kindergarten, yeah. he's got to be able to do this. It's all that anxiety you're bringing into the whole that's, process. That's right. Sure is a right. That, makes, that, that makes, doesn't make sense. That makes the most sense to me on, because I'm sure that's historic, like, and it makes a lot of sense because she's homeschooling, right? That you guys yeah. are going to control that. So that makes sense. That would be the smartest way to yeah. do it. Yeah. There's a little pressure on, and some schools are different. Like um, my buddy's school, his kid won't, because like, Max can do everything, right? And he, and he wipes himself even too. But- I, I make him wipe with wet wipes, so he so he, get, he does a good job because yeah. with dry stuff he doesn't no. do as good of a job, no. and so <laughs> boys leave. He doesn't use balance. the entire roll. Yeah, like. yeah. So <laughs> well, when we first we first why, why are boys so bad bro, at that? By the way, yeah. all boys are terrible. Yeah, I know, just that. like I, it, <laughs> I, I don't I know it, why my toilets are like overflowing, dude. <laughs> so I, I I I told Katrina I said um. The, the, like the first like week he had school, I I noticed that I'm like he's got he's got tracks in his freaking underwear. Huh? I'm like, come on, like, what's bro, you know how bad our kids are gonna be when they hear this shit. I, I, know, know, I know, you know, <laughs> we're safe. You guys already have old kids. They, they think we're, we're 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 not cool, so they're not gonna. You know what I'm saying? No matter, no matter how yeah. cool everybody else might think we yeah. might be, yeah. the fuck our kids are not gonna think yeah. we're ever cool. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like I'm gonna go yeah. back and listen to those hello episodes, even if they are. Yeah, about podcasts them. are gonna be dinosaur like. Yeah, yeah, I know, right? People. Anyway, it'll yeah, be like some point. telepathy yeah. type yeah. of thing, right? So okay. That he he's got these skid marks. So I tell Katrina, I'm like, uh, have him bring wipes, and he'll he'll do it just fine. And she's like, I don't know if the school let him. Well, our school lets him. My best friend's school won't let him. So Why? Because so, they clog the toilets. I don't. Well, you can make the the flushable ones. We yeah. use flushable ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. By the way, for all the people that always DM me about that too, they're yeah. just like, that's so bad for the environment. You should get the bidet and stuff like that. I had the bidet for a while. Those things don't work as good as as a good old fashioned wet. A light. real bidet does, but the bidet attachments. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, dude, the bidet right. attachment that's a little strong. I mean, if I'm going to be honest into that. Uh, what? You know, <laughs> no, what do you mean into? Just, I'm just yeah, saying into like, wiping. What, what do you mean? No, I mean like, <laughs> like squirting fucking jets up your ass. No, uh, that's not what I'm doing. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm I, 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 so I did it for a while. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So I had I had the attachment <laughs> thing going for a while and. You know, I, I can get kind of behind it, but the wet wipe is like, you know, you yeah, yeah you're 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 in and out. You're in mm -hmm. and out. You can serve toilet paper that way. It's better. Like just an added experience. You must, have, you must have had an experience, eight. and you're guaranteed. <laughs> He must yeah, have done yeah, it. Yeah, Got yeah, some weird feelings. Not yeah, doing that again. Yeah. No. Take it off, honey. Yeah, I don't like yeah, this. Yeah. That's supposed to sit yeah, on a reverse. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Must have been somewhere in Europe, but yeah, it was it was strong. It was yeah. too strong. Yeah, no, it does attach. Is it like so what's uh what is like Japan's pooping situation? Bro, Are have they you like seen J Japanese toilets? No. That's oh, they're super high tech. They have China. the most high tech toilets. Yeah, they in the world. actually have built in bidets. They have like fans that will blow your butt dry the that's whole legit. nine yards. <laughs> that's oh, legit. they do. Wow. Yeah, you should like see a picture. Cadillac you ever seen toilets. a picture? Why are we so dirty and stinky in the US? Uh, I, it just, wasn't you know, until like my 20s until I met a girl uh, who like schooled me on that. Like, yeah. and then I got my wiping game together. Yeah. I did not yeah. have my wiping game together until I was 20. No, Japan, they have two kinds of toilets, basically. I mean, they have regular toilets, but they have like. The old fashioned, just hole in the ground, oh, right? Squat, squat down, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. But that's that still like you still have those, okay. Typically, more in public places, maybe like train stations. Yeah, there's like two like feet that. print that you guys stand. But on then you go into other places, and they have the toilets. And toilets in Japan, they've taken them to the next level. You know what's crazy about those though? When I've seen pictures of them, if you don't know how to read Japanese, you, what do you do? Exactly. There's like eighty. Listen, eighty-five different functions. I know on. you push the wrong button. You're in for a good surprise. I mean, <laughs> Justin would be uh, really excited to push the no. wrong button. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, look at that. I'm wrong. What if, you, what if you sat on that? Wow. What, what do you do? I don't know. I don't wow. Know. One has it's like a video game. Two of them have butt cheeks. So I so, would start. Yeah, there. but what are they doing to the butt? What cheeks? are the tits for? I don't know. What? Those aren't tits. Those, those are, are butt, butt cheeks. Oh, those look like tits to me. <laughs> <laughs> and wash your tits while you're at it. <laughs> <laughs> Spray it in the face. Sweet. What's going on here? Yeah, there's that's hella buttons, Doug. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, the one graph? up at the top, there's like a, a Chinese character means big, and then the other one means small. 
Okay. Oh, so, so the which one you are? So that, well, no, it depends on what you do. Number one or number two, right? Oh. So you push the small button if you do a number one, and push the big button if you do a number two. If you need bigger flushing power, if you know oh, what I mean. Oh, I see. So they can serve water. Yeah. That way? So, but that's really the only buttons you need to know about that machine. That panel yeah. that's it what but, about all those buttons on the sides i mean that again tech. it's a bidet it's uh the, the different sprays well, a lot of up and down. so it looks like there's yeah a, you can actually change the position i was gonna say it looks like there's a lot like calibrating so it's like yeah so yeah. you, you want to have it you know so there's ideally no right at the old you had one of these bullseye. you could calibrate it just to your butthole <laughs> wow. so it's perfect yeah exactly <laughs> so right now what, you know what number that would be yeah, yeah. Just, you need some hey, custom. I would love messing with them. Uh, Going before him, <laughs> super strength, ultra See, jet. That's why I wouldn't trust it. You I said it recalibrate it. You're ready, like, buddy. Ah. Yeah, I watched uh, the movie. Was it Cars Three? Uh, that's why. That's why I knew about this. I know <laughs> your, your analogies lately have all been coming from movies. Disney cartoons. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> no uh, Mater goes into a Japanese bathroom. And oh, that's right. That's out. right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. I'm like, is that real? Yeah. I looked it up. I'm like, Holy Doug, cow. can you? I know you can speak a little Japanese. Can you read? I can read some, yeah. Okay. Uh, the Chinese characters, so I mean- you'd be okay in that situation. Yeah, I mean, there's no problem with that. They're, they're very Well, basic. those are Japanese characters or Chinese characters? Well, they're- So the, the Japanese, they use what's called kanji, which comes from Chinese. So it's basically the same characters as in Chinese. Oh, but I didn't they, know that. But they combine it with their own writing styles. They have a couple different writing styles they combine with, so- uh, and the <clears throat> writing style that they have is phonetic, so it's they have like this kakikukeko, which is- you know, okay. the Japanese is always a consonant and a vowel, basically, for the yeah. most part. Wow. Did you have to, when you taught English there, I guess you had to learn how to read some of it, right? Because you had to translate? Or oh, no, I did, no, I did no translation. Okay. It's just you know, more survival. Mm. You know, a couple of years ago, there was a theory that we were going to go back to, like, characters and emojis as, as communication, like, that as, as the emoji, like, thing mm. really kicked off. Mm -hmm. like, where are we at with that? Have you heard that? I don't know, but it's interesting because the Chinese characters are really <clears throat> pictures, yeah. So, for example, dog will mean dog in China or jo dog in Japan, but they're read differently. They different pronunciation because mm. it's a picture. It essentially means dog. Got it. That, that's like it's in a sense emoji. Have yeah, you, I, exactly. Yeah. Have you guys ever seen the keyboards, the computer keyboards uh, on a, I think they're called stenographers in courtrooms. Have you seen them? Have you seen? The, I haven't these, seen the keyboard. No. They use uh, something called a shorthand and it's like, it's not all the letters. It's like. It's less, less, so because they have to type so fast, it's mm -hmm. pretty wild. Have you seen them before? No, I haven't. They have these really weird, like, circular. Yeah, it's kind of, like, faced in, like yeah, this. Yeah, and they, they can I've type super fast because they use a different form of language called, I think it's called shorthand, if I'm not mistaken. Huh. Is, yeah, kind of interesting. I mean, it makes sense that we would go that direction because you could communicate so much more with, with a, like, a smaller amount. Now, what, what was the... What was the evolution to go from like? Because it was obviously characters back then. Oh, when you look at the walls, like oh, that's the short. Look at yeah. that. ancient look at Egypt. I mean, yeah. it, look at that little keyboard that the that the stenographers use in the huh. court. What? Yeah, weird. That because means... they have to move so fast to oh, yeah. get every word. Has it always been like that? They I use, always they thought she hand. was. I, I always yeah. thought she was typing the full words out. No, not the full words. It's shorthand. But they get you get all you you with shorthand. You get all the words. So mm. basically, she knows that when you put the PW space R something together, that means like a whole sentence yes. or something. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. wild! Kind of. So you you have to go to like school for that? Or you you do. Yeah. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. you do. Mm -hmm. Oh, so they used how do they to get paid? They get paid. Or okay? you just make it up. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, I have Andrew, no idea. No. They're called stenographers. Sten. Not, not Azo, stone. I can be a stenographer. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> so, so it's stenog stenographer. Stenographer. Yeah. Stenographer. Like a bubbleologist, kind of. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but it's I, a real I, profession. I'm sure that profession's not going to exist soon with AI. It'll just record everything that's being said. Yeah. And just type oh, it. If they're yeah. not already doing that. Yeah. No. Why do you even have that job anymore? Yeah. Well, uh, they're so accurate. I think they have. You have to be pretty highly trained, especially the the higher the court, you, the better you have to be at doing it. Yeah. So mm. my mom learned how to do paid? shorthand. Uh, that's thirty-one to sixty-nine thousand a year mm. in California. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's what not... a boring job, too. Oh, yeah. No. I don't know. You, no you're way. in a court Take learning all kinds day. of weird yeah. stuff. Yeah, but I don't think you're sitting there trying to process what's going on. You're like, you're still listening. You're still listening at that. When you do that for a living, you do that in your sleep, pretty much. Yeah, but I think court cases are like. What police officer? You ever talk to a cop? You're like, oh man, how exciting you're talking. Like a fire. 99 percent of the time is boring. Yeah, like 99 percent is yeah. pretty boring. Oh, yeah, I find yeah. like one fire a year. Yeah. <laughs> the rest is like the rest of the time accidents. Boring. It's not all murder type, you know, 
cases. That's, that's fair. probably boring that's, shit. That's fair. You know, mo- most of the time. So that's fair. I don't know. So okay. I wanted to take us a little bit into Adam's wheelhouse with this. Just Whoa. To, yeah, because we're always, you know, kind of uh, conspiracy heavy over here. Okay. Like, <laughs> Uh, so exciting, yeah. NBA, but specifically WNBA. Uh, <laughs> that's your wheelhouse, that's, Adam. <laughs> it's Adam's wheelhouse. So, I wanted to I get a lot you, of trouble with my. WNBA I want to ask post. you if, if this is a valid uh suggestion, which I thought okay, so Shaq, and you might have even already heard this, so I actually put out there that he was like thinking in terms of like all these other sports, you've seen how they've kind of restructured some rules and things to make the game more exciting and have like more action and like kind of eliminate a lot of the boring parts of it and whatnot. And it's like, you know, with the WNBA, because there's no real dunks, like yeah. why not lower the hoop? So I've thought of the same thing because they, they play with a smaller ball. It's not like they're playing with the same size ball as a man is. Sure. So like, why would you keep the, is the hoop? hoop the same? But yeah. why is the oh. hoop yet 10 feet? No, I agree. I, th- I think that's a, a oh, yeah, stupid. That makes sense. That makes total sense. Yeah. Why not have, cause dude, you think about that. Like when, you know, it's low and they, they can dunk and they can get uh, a little more aggressive. Aggressive. Yeah. Because people, that's what people want to see. And that's what makes it exciting. So I just, just to make that like, you know, more enticing. Cause like, I mean, obviously we've heard the angle of like, who's even watching it. And yeah. like, you know, and like, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of truth to that. A lot, a lot of lot truth lot there, of truth and like that. so, you know, or we should should we do these degrading kind of outfits like they did for like the lingerie football league? Oh yeah, my you god, know, that's, that's stupid. Yeah, that's, yeah, so that's like the stupid like. But um, so anyway, I thought that was a legitimate uh, uh, point. Yeah. Well, didn't they now? Didn't they change? I mean, they they changed. They pump uh, professional so, sports they like pump, that. The they pump so much money in the NBA. And it, it doesn't make WNBA. Oh, it yeah. doesn't make any money. No, well, they, but, just to keep it afloat. Yeah, yeah. So, but don't they change professional sports all the time to make them more exciting? Yes. Yeah. Okay. They change the rules. They all just time. did for baseball. Yeah. Don't they change? Yeah. They've done that now. They did ba- basketball. And- I mean, well, one, the three point line was created yeah. later on. That was something. Mm-hmm. Uh, the shot clock, like that, yes. didn't ex- that didn't exist at all. Then it then it was a certain. I don't remember what the original time was. So a pitcher now has a certain time before he yeah. has to throw the ball, mm-hmm. which is and I love same that. thing with basketball shot yeah. clock. Like you, it's sped the game up and made it more uh way more offensive and exciting because it has to be faster yeah so, fight, fight sports have changed a lot because that like the original mma was no rounds you hit the yeah ground, that's a good that just that's a really yeah. good question like if you're changing all these things anyways you've got a smaller ball you're playing with like why wouldn't you lower the hoop a little bit we know that dunking is more exciting and stuff like that like i don't know what the the thought process behind that yeah. And why they wouldn't just do that. I don't know if like all of a sudden people would think that, oh, discredit them. Like it's not the same game anymore, but it's like you're playing with a different size ball. So it's not exactly the same already. So yeah. why I, not? They, well, it's not happening. So let's, yeah, make it weird, more exciting. The, you know, the part that I think is, is so funny about this is that like, um, because it's a lot of the push is like for, you know, uh, equal, you know, everything's equal, have to be equal. Women should have this league and they should get paid the same and all stuff like that. It's like, well, if you want it all equal like that, then why don't you just put everybody in a league? And if you're a good enough girl to no, play, well, of course they won't. Of course yeah. they won't. But I mean, you can't, you can't ask for it to be like exactly equal, but then no. we also segregate well, it. It's play like, into their strengths. I, like, I think that's ridiculous to think yeah. it's the same thing. Well, it's pay, not the same the, thing. The pay thing's silly. They actually make, uh, the, they actually, I don't remember, I think it was basketball, it might be soccer, actually make a greater percentage of the amount of money they uh, bring in than the men do. So, well, you, say, what did you just say? I think it's basketball, but it might be soccer. What? Uh, that the women's team, they make less than the men, obviously. In the, in the argument, which is a very valid one, is they just make they just bring in less money, so mm-hmm. you're making less money. But as a percentage of the money they bring in, they actually make a greater percentage than the men do. Oh, of, of course. Yeah. 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 No. Yeah. Like significantly more. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and a lot of that is funded by like the NBA or yeah. the NFL or that they they're pumping money into it so they can pay those salaries and do yeah. that. It's not but, even built. It's not run. It's not run like a legitimate business. It's probably now. Here's where I'll like before I get, you know, crucified for all this stuff. Um, there there was a time when nobody watched bas- men's basketball. There was a time when no, hardly anybody watched the NFL. Right. And part of what got it really popular was just the awareness around sure. it. Sure. Okay. So it could so, take time. So it could take time. Also, the game, if you watched basketball in the 50s and 60s, it looks like women's basketball mm. right now. It was like very a slow, lot of bank shots, a lot of layups, a lot of, of bank yeah. shots. You know, it just wasn't as exciting. And so, you know, mm. maybe it's just going to take time of evolving more awareness, greater athletes getting introduced into that. To, and I think that is the, the thought process on like why prop this up, yeah. why keep trying to make it happen like that is that this hope that, 
you know, in 15, 20 years from now, women's basketball will look a lot different than what it looks like now because you've attracted a much greater population of people that are interested in it and they've gotten better and better and better okay, at the sport. So now on the completely opposite flip of the coin into the men's realm, you see an example of somebody like a Rick Barry who used to shoot his, his uh, percentage was like 89% free throw shooter and was like really one of the highest, you know, uh, percentages out there in terms of consistency. Uh, you don't see that kind of like high average, but his style was completely unconventional. Was like super like granny underhand. Oh, is that what he did? Shot. Mm -hmm. Nobody's done replicated that since. Do you know that uh, you've had some guys do it a little bit? Okay, but there's a there's a player there's a player for um, God. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna draw a blank right here, but it doesn't matter for the point. Who actually switched to shooting his free throws with the opposite hand? And is a better oh, free throw shooter. And so you've seen guys that have kind of tried it a little bit. Do you know why uh, people try it, by the way? The physics of underhand throwing uh, a free throw is better. The odds of you making of the it. Arc. The arc, the backspin, uh, the yeah, physics backspin, of it are much better yeah. than uh, than the, the, the traditional way that they uh, try to make the shot. And obviously when you're playing, you don't want to do that because you'll get well, knocked out of your hands. But with the free throw, I remember specifically I had a science teacher yeah. who broke it down. And taught us like it was that, that and it was the indefensible like hook Kareem shot. hook shot, right? The sky hook. No. That was another one you don't see ever. Yeah, you don't since. see a lot you don't yeah. see a lot of and I think a lot of it's just because it hasn't it's not taught at a young age, you don't keep doing it. But I bet you if somebody actually really promoted and, and taught that kind of underhand free throw, you know, since we're talking about sports, It'd be and cool I get to see a very small window to ever do this. I know that, <laughs> that you will find Wedge interesting. In see what you did, you did. Uh, yeah. There's a there's a uh -huh. there's a baseball player. So I used to say like what we haven't seen yet in baseball, and one day we're gonna see this is uh, a, a player, and we there is a guy right now, and of course I'm going to draw a blank on his name too, that is a pitcher who's crushing home runs. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's rare, isn't it? it un, that hasn't happened. We well, haven't yeah. had Not like home a, runs. We yeah. haven't had a dominant pitcher who's also dominant hitting home runs, and that to me would be, be – would be the greatest like baseball player you could ever have. It's just your normal, you specialize yeah. in throwing. And yeah. so that's how you, nervous would you be as a, a general manager, like a coach? Oh, what that he's that he's doing both. Cause that's if he's your star pitcher yeah. and then oh. going up there to, to home plate. Andrew, like, you probably know who it is. Yeah. His name's Shohei Otani. Oh, thank you, buddy. Wait, so he, and he, where'd he, where'd he come from? Japan. Yeah. So he oh. actually led Japan to win the world's, um, the world classic when they played against the U S team USA and they won it. Wow. Oh, wow. And what's, what is he right? Where is he right now in home runs for, uh, in comparison or like, where is he ranked right now? Um, he's not number I mean, he's one. Like, he's amongst like the top, he's like probably top five. Yeah. Wow. It's, yeah. And he's like a, like a shutdown. He's, like, he's like the best of the best pitching and hitting. Yeah. Wow. Like that's, that's remarkable. That's never happened. He would never. Super interesting. I don't know why I didn't think to default to you right away. Sorry, Andrew. I was like, <laughs> he's our baseball. Yeah. Guy. We have the baseball guru yeah. guy in here right oh, now. Oh, there he is. Yeah. Oh, wow. Remarkable. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, uh, baseball. Is that the most popular sport in Japan? Uh, well, I don't know if it's the most popular, but it's very, very popular. Do they play differently there than they do here? Is, is there a different strategy or is it the same? Yeah, don't you remember when, uh, was it uh, Ichiro was like one of the, like it, yeah, strategy he was wise. Like the first they, they play the game really. same, but like he was like one of the first players to come over to the US and like focus on like these little dinkers, like intentionally. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. Like we have, we have this kind of like, we, we glorify home runs and the yeah. big hits and crushing the ball and stuff like that. And he would like, he was all placement. Yeah, yeah. He would come up and like really just like slap the ball. You know, it's funny. You remember when uh, Karan played with us? Yeah. So, you know, he he, was he, a lot re like that. he referenced the other day about how we did softball, all of us yeah. as, as trainers, and we ended up sucking. Um, Karan, uh, he played cricket growing up. And, and he was a world-class badminton player, yeah. too. Yeah, and so he gets up. Now, he never played baseball or softball, but he's on our softball team, and he was great. But what he would, like, slap it. Yeah. It, looked, it looked so unconventional, but he was, like, one of the best hitters on our team. Uh, yeah. Because the way he played. He hit those gaps, like, every uh -huh. time. He could yeah, just, he was really yeah, good at placing the ball wherever it. he wanted to, and he looked where the gap was, and then he just kind of slapped it over there. Yeah. It was a bit of crushing the home run. That's interesting. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, from an outside perspective, I guess, uh, because sports, uh, especially professional sports, um, it's such a, like... It's to the point now where you're, you're the best of the best can play, and so many people play the particular sport that the body types that make you the best at a particular position are not the same body types that make you good at other positions, uh -huh. right? Mm -hmm. And I think football is probably the most clear. Like whatever makes you a great lineman probably ain't going to make you a good maybe wide receiver or cornerback. Okay, right? speaking of yeah. that. 
This yeah. is weird to me, okay? Um, Lewis House, yeah. oh, who yeah. references being this you know pro football player guy or whatever at one point. Arena in football, career. right? He did arena football, and yeah. he posted the other day his right. card. Never in my life. And, and, and so in arena football, like you can't do this in the NFL, but in arena football, you can play uh, both ways, just like high school and stuff. You can play uh, defense and you can play uh, offense. What do they call that? Iron... What is like it? Iron Man? What, what do you they mean? call that when you play when when they play both positions? Isn't there a term for that? Going football? both ways? No, not that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if they have a term. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> go ahead. Adam. I don't think there was a term. I thought there's a term when you play, like, know, play where you play football maybe, and everybody maybe. plays both sides. Bi positional. It's the, same, it's the no. same same people uh, play well, offense and defense. Uh, well, it's not. It's actually not like that. Okay. It's just some guys we can, are talented enough that they'll they'll play both sides of the ball. But I've never seen what he linebacker and wide receiver. That seems so. Odd. Yeah, because to your point about body types and positions, like the, you would see a wide receiver go to corner or safety because sure. you want to be leaner, fast, you know, kind agile. Lanky. Yeah, lanky. Like that. that's the same type of bodies. You can see this kind of crossover. Right. I've never seen a crossover with a, a, a linebacker, to wide, it's going to be wide receiver, maybe tight end, yeah. but even that is weird. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. linebacker, you're more beefy. You, you, yeah. know, you need to take on a lot more mass, you know, in front of you. So, and you got to be explosive and all that. So, what yeah, your, I don't see the, what was your the pairing there, linebacker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. beefy cakes. Yeah, you yeah. would see linebacker and what running back or something like totally. that. Totally, that's yeah. a, that, that's all. That's usually the pairing. I yeah. thought running backs were typically shorter than linebackers, though. Or is that no, just sh line, linebackers aren't normally tall? No. Linebackers are normally really? short. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, they're not typically that tall. I mean, really, it's like you're. You're the bulldog out there, like trying to like uh, basically establish that, like help support the the, the defensive Football line. Football is the and most attack. Is you're the, you're most, the attacker. It's the most like war if you mm. look at it, really, because you got like your jets. Your tanks, you're the one that makes all the tackles if it's if your if your system's working right. Ah, interesting. Yeah. Um. So I heard that was it you Adam that brought this up that the prime drink yeah is getting sued yeah potentially so dumb though. It, can't, it it won't it won't stand up over two hundred milligrams. Now the wait wait well, hold on. What's explain this? The okay, so so the, I'm assuming it has to do with caffeine. You just yes. mentioned. Okay. Yeah, it's saying that it's dangerous. So and I why I think it's getting uh, news and why it's the, it, someone even is attempting to is because how popular it's become with kids. Mm. Probably, like, and you've brought this up, Justin. Mm -hmm. Like at your your Dude, kid's school, like prime. It's alarming. Yeah, it's it's a, it's honestly it's a. Uh, status okay like, like they're like i'm a prime or like it's prime or gatorade there's right. like one or the other mm -hmm. and so i think that's why they're coming after prime is because i think for the first time energy drinks are were more popular for like high school and above like drinking caffeine coffee any of that stuff like that and it's only been in the last like decade or two not even two decades last decade has these energy drinks made its way to the younger population. And arguably, Prime is... I, and it would be neat to find the stat if you guys could find the stat at all, but I bet you that uh, Prime has got to have the youngest... Uh, caffeine drinking audience to, than any other energy drink, and so that's what they're coming out. But it's only two hundred. If so, Bang and Rain and all those other ones, there's three hundred milligrams. So it's Chuck Schumer. Yeah, Chuck Schumer is calling on the FDA to investigate high caffeine content in Logan Paul's Prime Energy Drink. Now, okay, look, here's the deal. Um, <clears throat> I kind of agree with this, but not Prime. I do agree that caffeine. Should have some regulation. Hundred percent. It's it's. A, I I agree too, but you can't you can't single out prime. Well, he's doing that because it's because it's prime. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I do think that caffeine should be regulated mm -hmm. to some extent. Demo sure. skews younger, eighteen to twenty five is much younger than the traditional sports drink market. Yeah. See, that's what I figured. Yeah. yeah. And because I would say younger. It says eighteen to twenty five. Well, they have two. The the, the confusing Lower part not. is they have a prime. that's like the Gatorade. Right? It's just more electrolytes. Mm -hmm. and It's like a sugar sports drink yeah, versus one? their their one with caffeine yeah but you know which one got popular, but you know right? the ones yeah it's a drug but that's the thing the kids will go to the ones with the caffeine yeah well look okay again uh actually a lot, people, a lot of people don't realize this caffeine is a drug yes. and it has legit Dude, withdrawal we, it has if, addictive property if we found caffeine today it would be illegal it would be illegal yes we would well, we're 100%. also doing G Fuel, which is even worse. Yeah. So that's, you know, because of the video game culture. Yes. Yeah. That is another one that's up there in caffeine. Yeah. I don't know. G Fuel might be like 180, it's, but still it's close. It's crazy. Or yeah, like it's, Ghost. No, no. Uh, yeah. another Listen, one. Listen, the, the LD50 for caffeine is low, meaning a certain amount. Uh, I forgot what the dose is. Will kill like half the people. Well, the fact that there's it. any sort of negative effects, and there is no like a kid could go buy nine of them, and no, the, no one tells him he can't drink nine in a row. That's dangerous. That would be hell. He dangerous. wouldn't know. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, he'd die. Yeah, there actually was a kid that died from. They were selling caffeine powder that you could take mm -hmm. by the scoop. 
Mm-hmm. And the kid, yeah, uh, yeah, he took a few that. too many scoops and he ended up uh, dying. I've heard horrible stories about that too. Like the kid that's going to camp that's bringing all of the drinks with caffeine to sell them. Inevitably, they had like a, uh, a vending machine there. So all the kids were just buying them from the vending machine, ends up drinking them all himself. And then, like, I don't know if he died, but he got very, like, Death yeah, isn't it strange that like the things that we try and regulate and and stop and stuff like that and that fact, but it has to be money though, right? I mean, there's so mm-hmm. much money in energy drinks and caffeine and stuff like that that it's like the toothpaste is out of the tube. Well, already, in the right? past, it wasn't really an issue to have to regulate caffeine because you got caffeine from coffee, and kids don't like coffee. Coffee, well, yeah, they yeah. might now because we make them uh, like takes like milkshake. Well, we I we talked about exactly. this on the show yeah, years Starbucks ago. Is a thing it was eight too. years ago when we when we first was because I remember we had that Starbucks on Lincoln right down the road from mm-hmm. the, the the original studio. And I remember being super like, oh my god! Like I walk into Starbucks and I'd see, you know, some lady in there with her two or three little kids that were getting all these, you know, I think they had like a unicorn drink. They had all these like that were that had caffeine in them. Mm -hmm. Like, what are you doing? Like introducing that to them that early? Like that's crazy. Do you know Starbucks regulates their nitro? Yeah. I can't get I can't get more than a grande. That's right. Pisses me off every time. Remember I had the hack for a while there. Oh oh, yeah, I I buy two. Yeah yeah. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. For a while there, I had a hack for that. I would like because they always ask you the size if you don't tell them the size. Like, oh, I'll have a nitro cold brew. Just for my buddy. They're like, oh, what size? The biggest you'll give me. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then sometimes they want to be cool and like hook you up with a bigger size, but they're not allowed to. They're not supposed to give you more than a grande because they know they know that. Oh, it's a strong. But okay, now explain the logic behind that. That that's not over two hundred milligrams in a in a a grande. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grande nitro is close to three. Give me the breakdown on that. It's it's like three fifty. No, no, no. I think it's two seventy five or two two. Almost how much? Oh, 280. 280. Okay. 280. There you go. All right. So it's almost 300. In a grande? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wow. Yep. Yeah. So you're right. It is yeah. flying. Yep. yep. Wow. So, boy, when I was getting those Ventis, <laughs> you <laughs> you're, Venti? you're buzzing, dude. You had a Venti Nitro? Yeah. Oh, I used to do those with you. Yeah. yeah what great. would that be? So, what's the ounces in it? Well, ounces. Hello, Adam. Venti is, uh, so a grande is what, 18 ounces, and then the Venti is, is the uh, 20. 20 ounces. Mm-hmm. So it's another two ounces. No, it's got to be more than that. So I must be, it must be 16 and 20. 16, 20, I don't know. I think, I think that's what the it is. Person. 12 and six, uh, uh, 16 for Grande. Venti is 24. Oh, well, snap. Wait, wait, so you're like 400. Venti is 24? Yeah. 24 ounces. So you you, you had like 400. Wouldn't that, wouldn't that be Venti Quattro? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Would that be Venti Quattro to make sense? I don't know. You're the Spanish I, speaker. I say me. extra large. Okay. Uh, I just say extra large. Yeah. Well, I, I thought just, they were always based off the. the uh, I don't care. You know, they have one size bigger the Trenta. 30. Would 31 make, ounces. What, th- that makes no sense. No. It would be 31. Yeah. Why would that be that? That makes well, no sense. Well, it's Italian, cool. probably. It's, uh, is, it is, not? It, is, it, is Italian different than that? It's, no, you got it. That's you got like, it. It's like very it close to Spanish. Yeah. It's, it's very identical. similar. That's there you go. Yeah, I wouldn't go with that. Well, Adam spe- the linguist. It's Speaking of stimulants, uh, I've Inaccurate. been reading a lot lately about an herb that's uh, been used traditionally for over 2,000 years, uh, ginseng. I've been reading a lot about ginseng. Because one of our partners has a product that um, I started using and I really started to, I'm, I'm really enjoying its effects. And I'm looking at the ingredients and I'm familiar with all the other ingredients, but it's got ginseng in there, which I haven't taken in a long time. And I'm, I, I think it's the ginseng that's added to it that's causing the effects. So it's Joy Mode and it's a, they, they advertise it as a supplement to improve uh, sexual enjoyment, that kind of stuff. Uh, but really what it does is it boosts nitric oxide. And so I use it as a pre-workout because um, mm. you you also want more blood flow when you work and out. you think that's the main reason why you feel that? Why it feels different than when I take other things that have all the other stuff in there, uh, like the citrulline uh, and then, you know. Got it. Yeah, and um, it's, it's got to be the ginseng. Now, ginseng, again, it's been around for a long oh, time. Oh, yeah, I've heard about ginseng forever. Um, it's a classic adaptogen. It's got, um, you know, mental boosting qualities, mood boosting qualities mild stimulant boosting qualities it's uh it's one of those herbs out there it's been used for so long longevity it's a longevity herb really interesting so I, i've been reading more and more about it and um yeah it's uh, it's cool to rediscover something i haven't looked into for Do you a know while. the first time i ever heard about ginseng you guys remember the first like drink or thing that you remember ginseng in oh god I tried sobe it. Oh, oh, Sobe. I remember yeah. Sobe. Remember Sobe's? Teas, yeah. <laughs> what happened to them? That had a... I don't know. They may still be around. They, they, they Come up, Andrew. Where's Sobe drinks at? Do, they, uh, do you still yeah, see... Remember when the little gecko... Popular is yeah. like power bars. Had the little like geckos the or whatever on that? Yeah. They were huge at one point, weren't they? Yeah. yeah. They pixie dust the crowd. Yeah, they still sell them. They yeah. do? Yeah. They're mm-hmm. still around? 
Yeah, they're still around. Who are they owned by? Are they owned, is it just Sobe or is it like Coke already bought them? Pepsi owns them. Pepsi, Pepsi, yeah. Yeah. Pepsi or Coke own every they soft do. drink. They yeah, do. it's yeah, it's corner. They do. But yeah. but gin, the first time I tried ginseng, I was a kid because my uncle's an uh, herbalist. And um, he, you know, I remember one time I saw something and said, I borrowed a little bottle of ginseng and I took it. And I thought I felt something from it. Uh, but I took it. I was 12. So I don't know if that was a good age <laughs> to do that. <laughs> But, uh, but you yeah. were like in class and you just like, you didn't want to answer any questions. No, you have to go no, that didn't, yeah. well that happened anyway. Yeah. yeah. Do you think yeah. if you're an herbalist, you're also probably a good cook too? What? Yeah. Cause, you, Cause you know a lot about all the herbs. Real spicy. No, not yeah. those kind. Not really. It's not yeah. like that. No, no. Mm. You ever have, I feel like you would. Be. Have you ever had real, you ever, have you ever had an herbalist who's not a good cook? Yeah, my uncle. Uh, have oh, he's, you ever, a, he's not a good cook. No, not. Have you ever theory already dismantled? Yeah, yeah, yeah. done. Different have kinds you ever of had yeah. real like? Uh, have either either one of you ever been to uh, someone who practices Chinese medicine and given you like powders and stuff to treat? Have yeah, you, uh-huh. yeah. you have. Yeah, my Katrina's their acupuncturist is is mm-hmm. also an herbalist. Too, Do they so. ever taste good? No, never. No. Yeah. So no, they're not. They're not looking at making. Well, no, yeah, I think your your knowledge behind it. So like, I yeah. mean, in your your learnings around herb that you learned, also the ones that you cook with too. I know. I understand that. Like, you don't use you know ginseng in your pasta or whatever like that. So, but I mean, no. I would think that you, Doug, you probably have the most experience, right? You've done a lot of Chinese medicine. Yeah, and it never tastes good. He's also the best cook. Yeah. Well, well he doesn't helps know how to prove do my theory. It. But I don't know how to formulate that stuff. <laughs> yeah. It's really about the effect, right? Not mm-hmm. about the flavor. Yeah, so. yeah. A lot of them are teas, too. They'll give you powders, right. and you have to make them into teas and then drink the powder at the or bottom tinctures. of the Tinctures. Tinctures and stuff like Speaking that. Speaking yeah. of cooking, I have a different shout out for us today. Uh, so I follow this guy, and I think I found him because remember when uh, Traeger sent us mm-hmm. the Traeger and that we were uh, yeah. briefly. Oh, I saw this. Yeah, I follow him, too. Working with. Uh, so that's how I think I originally found him because I think he's sponsored by Traeger. Also, uh, this guy's name is Kendrick underscore BBQ, and the dude just barbecues his ass off. And he's got, I mean, just drops recipe after recipe of like really cool. So, oh, there's his IG. Thank you. Do you really learn cool. from him? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Man. No, I so I, I I watch. I mean, I he's not the only guy I watch, but I watch. I mean, I'm. Do you actually, Doug? Are you into like watching barbecue dudes and channels? Like, I follow a few. I do if <laughs> there's something that. Yeah, <laughs> if there's something that, specific <laughs> I want to cook, then I'll follow somebody for sure. So yeah. if, if I want to learn how to make a really Big good brisket, buns, then I'll you know start I mean? to. I mean, it's like that. okay, it's one of those things that we're you know we're this generation that like we still haven't fully adopted all these great resources. It's like <laughs> I, I remember when I first like started, I'm like, what am I doing? Like you've got these people that like are absolutely brilliant at doing doing these things. Like I just follow their recipes. So yeah, a lot of the stuff that you've seen me grill, it's because. It's not because I figured it yeah, out. Yeah, you guys break it down. You and you and Doug in particular. But that's not real me. scientific. With yeah. It's not me. It's because I've learned. I've I follow enough of these guys and and pay attention. And I see these little hacks. Or, and they everyone has different styles. And so I'll try something out. And some styles mesh with my style. And so it's something that I'll adopt. And it's now. Well, how I, I never I never cool. thought twice about barbecue until we went to Texas. And then uh, it shattered. Oh, my it just destroys world. you from every other barbecue. I just after. I remember we ate the for the first time barbecue there, and I was like. What the f- yeah? Why? Have I been what have we before? been doing? So yeah. I have a. This is so different, you know, Doug. I would like to hear your point and theory on this, like why Texas is so special in that way. And my thought process is the two biggest factors. Obviously, there's all kinds of style and different things that, but the two biggest differences, I think, uh, quality of meat and slow cooking is their it's thing. The slow cooking. Yeah, yeah, I think there's a whole culture it's too culture. around it. Yeah, so you yeah. got so many people doing it. The cream rises to the top. Right. And yeah, the, okay, yeah. that's a good point. It's, it's that would add to that. Yeah. That would add to that. So you have like this great source of meat. You got a culture around slow cooking and get, being good at it. And so it, it just breeds. Look, like it's the a, same reason why you'll get great Italian food in New York. You'll get great Mexican food in California. It's like, it's all about the culture. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, here, our barbecue culture sucks ass. It's disgusting. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's so yeah. bad. But we got other food that's right. Hey, you know, Santa, the, Santa Maria tri tips, you know. To my not, point, is because, you know what I'm saying? We, what, uh, you know, California, the Bay Area, especially, is like all about you know fast, fast yeah. life and stuff like that. Like if you're a slow, if you like to slow cook, like mm. that's not the. I mean, that's the the only reason why I don't barbecue even more is because I do like to slow cook, and now you're committing, you know, four hours to eight hours that's or more crazy. of you know working the grill. So it's yeah. like. I, I got to have the time and the weekend to do that. And I just, this. No wonder why dads like barbecuing. All right, yeah. honey, I'll be outside it's, for eight bro, hours. Bro, don't yes. bother me. Yes. Golf, <laughs> golf, 
golf, barbecue, always. You, can get, you know, Flipping golf, barbecue, heat. and taking a shit. Those are like the three places <laughs> yeah. a man can golf, get away in his, in his 40s yes. with children. Yeah. Like that. that sums it up. I can tell my wife, oh, I, I got to go. I'm going to grill that brisket. Oh, you know, briskets. You know, that's a yeah. long cook. I'll be it's, out there for 10 yeah. hours, honey. Yeah. I'll wake up early. Yeah. yeah. Same, same thing with golf. trees. Same thing with golf. I got to go go around and golf. That's why I think, like, sooner or later, almost all dads, like, no matter how shitty you are, you pick golf up because you figured that part out. Or or mechanics, right? They'll just sit in there and, like, have a project where they're just tinkering. They just literally are looking at the engine and drinking beer and just like, yeah, I'll figure that out. How funny is that? Those are all the things that we're drawn to. I don't do any of those things. (laughs) Look, if you eat a lot of meat because you're trying to get a lot of protein, check out ButcherBox. They deliver grass-fed meats to your door, including wild-caught fish and heritage pork. It's healthy meat delivered to your door at great prices. Go check them out. Go to butcherbox.com forward slash mind pump. Um, and in that link, you'll get New York strips for a year with your box plus $20 off. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Brittany from Massachusetts. Hi, Brittany. How can we help you? Hi, how are you guys? Great. Wow, this is like so crazy that I'm actually talking to you. Um, <laughs> before I go into my whole little story for you. I just want to say that I switched careers from being a full-time hairstylist to a personal trainer two years ago um, at 30 years old. And I listen to you guys every single day on my way to and from work. And I just want to say thank you. You guys have helped me so much with coaching my clients, especially since I've only been doing it for a short time. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate right that. Great. All right. I'm just going to read my email because there's a lot that goes into it. Um, this way I can try to stay organized. Um, a bit of a backstory. Four years ago, I was 200 pounds. Over the course of about two years, I lost 50 pounds naturally through diet and exercise. And ever since then, I've always gotten into the range of being like 150 to 155, around 25% body fat. And that's kind of like where my body likes to stay most of the time. When I get to lean out a little bit below that, around 18 to 20% body fat, usually like 140 to 147, I've gotten down into that range multiple times in my life. But every time that I go to reverse out of it and try to stay a bit leaner, I always tend to put on a lot of body fat. I feel like I struggle with occasional binging episodes and I'm just not able to remain in a body fat percent and weight that I'm comfortable with unless I'm tracking my food. Um, I did compete uh, for WBFF in April this year, and I got down to 17% body fat. Um, And since then, I've put on about 13 pounds of fat back on. I did feel like I struggled with some of like the post-show binging and things like that. And I recently did a body scan and I'm back up to about 24% body fat. With that, um, about nine months ago, I was diagnosed with PCOS and endometriosis. So I have some hormonal issues. I got blood work done and my progesterone was completely undetectable and my testosterone was very, very low. So I've now started hormone replacement with creams with both of those um, drugs. Basically, my question is, I just am in a place where I don't know where to turn. I've struggled over the last couple of years putting on muscle. I can't seem to stay in a place of leanness that makes me happy. I feel like I'm really good at coaching my clients. But when it comes to figuring out the right path for me, I'm just not sure which way to go. I'd like to get a little leaner, but I don't know if that's something I should focus on right now, where my focus should be and what steps I should take to progress over the next year. Yeah, great question. Yeah, B- Thank um, you. based off of what you're saying, um, I would focus on getting healthy, yep. uh, and that's going to get you where you want to go. First off, a low to mid body fat percentage in the 20s yes. is a healthy place to be for a woman, especially if she's fit. So if you work out and you're in that range, that's a healthy place to be. Because of the shows that you competed in, because you lost a lot of weight before, I'm going to guess that there was a lot of potential overtraining, over dieting. Um, yeah. endometriosis and PCOS are very closely connected to, uh, insulin resistance, uh, as well. Um, so, mm-hmm. and sometimes this doesn't show up, uh, on tests, low test. And now hormone, uh, imbalances are often the result of, and not necessarily the cause of, uh, certain issues. So what'll happen is you'll go on progesterone and testosterone, you'll feel better, but the root cause might not necessarily uh, be addressed. H- have you seen a functional medicine practitioner or has this only been through a hormone doctor? Okay. Just through a hormone doctor. 
Okay. I, a, a functional medicine practitioner would be where I would go. Yeah. I would I would work okay. with them and look at I would look at your gut. Um, in your email, you also wrote about inflammatory foods. So I'd that's another thing I was going to ask, like how um, accurate you think those type of tests are, because I know you deal with a lot of gut issues yeah. and things like that. Well, they're they're a, a starting point, but they don't tell you the whole okay. picture. But okay. if you do one of those tests and there's like a bunch of foods that light up on that. Um, then uh, I would look at gut health is what I would do. And okay. people who tend to who overtrain, over diet, lots of stress, those are all stresses on the body, tend to develop gut issues because it it, it affects motility, gut you know, uh, wall permeability. Um, so I would work with a functional medicine practitioner to find some of the root issues, and then I would work on getting healthy. And then what'll happen is you might get leaner just from doing that. You probably will without okay. having to worry about cutting and overtraining and pushing yourself and, and all that stuff. Um, so that's 100% uh, where I would look. And and they're going to they're gonna look to look at your insulin sensitivity. They'll probably test your A1C. They'll look okay. at your fasting uh, glucose. They might look at your thyroid. Oftentimes, uh, you go get your thyroid tested. Levels look normal, but they don't look for things like antibodies. So you could have normal okay. thyroid, but antibodies are actually making it like you have no thyroid. So that's okay. another thing that you'd want to look at. Um, so very often PCOS and endometriosis have lots of other things that are contributing to that. Um, and you want to find, you want to kind of look and find the root cause versus covering it up. See, a lot of women will actually go on birth control to cover up those symptoms yeah. or they'll go on, you know, hormones like you are nothing wrong with, uh, hormone therapy, but at 30 years old, um, and otherwise healthy, I would say there's something cause. else that's probably contributing to that. Um, and I would address those things. Otherwise, what's going to happen is you're going to play this catch-up game uh, for your entire life, which is it sounds yeah. like you're getting tired of playing that. It's um, been a long time. Like It's great to not be in that higher weight range anymore, but there's still just like that small area that I can't seem to break through. So yeah. that's good. Yeah, you know? I, and I think too that you, you do your best. I mean, we're all going to say almost the same thing, but definitely do your best to kind of let go of the body composition right now and purely okay. focus on just health. So like my training fo focus with you would be like, let's talk about mobility. Let's talk about strength. Like we're focusing on those things. Like I don't want the scale. I don't want the body fat percentage. We're not going to talk about that stuff right now. Let's, let's get okay. you healthy. Let's talk about how you feel. Let's talk about how strong you are. Let's talk about how mobile you are. And kind of yeah. let th let that go right now as we're trying to get to the root cause of what's going on, because if you're constantly watching that, that'll that'll kind of be a mind fuck, right? Because you could easily go up a few body fat percentage in the pursuit of getting healthier, and it doesn't mean you're going Absolutely. the wrong, and it doesn't mean you're going the wrong direction. You could actually be going in the right direction, but if you're hung up on that, it could cause you to to, to take a left when you were heading the right direction. So my advice is is if I you were my client, would be let's not. Let's not think about that right now. You're in a good place right now, really, body fat percentage wise. Let's really focus on the health aspect. And the way I would do that through training would be focused on strength and mobility. Yeah. Now, Brittany, the worst thing yes. you could possibly do would be to try to do another show. So I hope you're not thinking about signing up for another show. That's absolutely I'm not. okay. Good. Don't do that. Yeah. Um, but just to sell this a little better, okay? If mm -hmm. you work with a functional medicine practitioner, they find some kind of root issues that you could start to work with. This Here's why that's such a, um, a good thing to do. It'll make being lean and strong and fit and healthy easy. So if right now it feels like a struggle, if it feels like you're always kind of clawing at it, and if you just go off a little bit, oh my God, my body responds in this weird way, and I got to push things. That's exactly this. what happens. Yeah. So you can you could literally... Put, by by improving your health and finding some of these root issues, you, you're you going to get to a place where you're going to be like, and I've seen this so many times with clients where they come to me and they go, this is really weird. Like I'm doing half the work and I look and feel way better. It almost feels like it's too easy. I'm like, well, that's because your body, you're working with your body rather than fighting against it and not addressing some of these issues. So um, again, I, I think a functional medicine practitioner. Now, the other side of this is this, Brittany, you're a trainer. How long have you been training people? Two years. Okay. A functional medicine, you need to have one in your back pocket for your clients as well. Yeah, one anyways. Of the, it's okay. the, the best partnership I ever had mm -hmm. for my clients was a good functional medicine practitioner. Just going through this process is going to make you a hell of a trainer. It will make right. you an amazing trainer. Really well. to do. And then you'll yeah. have somebody there that you could refer your clients to. 
Um, and you'll also know what to look for. The only reason why I know like what I'm saying to you about mm -hmm. PCOS and endometriosis and is, is not because I, I'm a functional medicine practitioner. It's because I've worked with them so many times that I've had clients like you and then they've come and solved those issues. And I saw, oh, this was the issue. And I can see these trends. Uh, but insulin insensitivity um, is very common uh, with those things. And there's lots of things that can cause it. And gut inflammation tends to be at the top uh, of those okay. things. So, um, again, look at those. We have a, um, a forum on Facebook called MP Holistic Health. Go ahead and get mm -hmm. in there. It's totally free. They have functional okay. medicine practitioners in there that can that'll answer questions for you. And then the the practitioners in there work with Dr. Stephen Cabral. He's one of the best in the business. So you could go with him. Dr. Becky Campbell's another good functional medicine practitioner. Go to Cabral. You could look into. Uh, they're they're all they're they're all really really good. But go to mpholistichealth.com. Uh, Thank you. You got it. No problem. Um, by the way, workouts wise, uh, are you following any of our programs? I'm not um, following any of yours specifically. I did want to purchase one when I was off of show prep and I just wasn't sure which one would have been right for me. Um, so I am following a program right now, but it's not one of yours. Either okay. anabolic or 15. Yeah. Let me do this for you because you're a trainer. I think MAPS mm -hmm. anabolic will be great for you. I think MAPS prime pro will be great for you, for your clients. Thank so you. we're going to send both those to you. Okay. Very exciting. Thank you guys so much for everything. Appreciate you got, it. You yep. got it. Right. Thanks for calling in. Yeah. Uh, I mean, she's, you feel better with the hormone therapy, but if you don't solve the issue, that's probably one yeah. of the, the one knocks I have on, you know, hormone replacement therapy mm -hmm. is as, right. as amazing as it can feel. It could also mask what really else is going on. And you're just really kicking the can down the road and eventually you're going to have to address that stuff anyways. But I mean, when you're, a, when you're a trainer, like, and if you are having these, like, I wish I wish I knew someone like Dr. Cabral when mm -hmm. I was in my 20s and yeah. trying to figure my own shit yeah. out. Like, yep. one, it would be amazing to go through that process and learn about myself, but even more valuable, like the education yeah. of like going through that so I can now communicate that to my clients. Like, I would have been such a better coach and trainer had I had someone like him in my back pocket or had gone through the testing uh -huh. and learned from him so I can then communicate that. I mean, he's even got- uh, Yeah, we all learn that. And that's why we have those forums established. He's got, for, for coaches and trainers that are listening to this, I mean, Cabral oh, amazing has, courses. has courses and yeah. certifications where he teaches yeah. you how to read uh, labs. Mm -hmm. Like, that's so valuable to be able to do that and help your clients out. Like, 100%, if I was still a trainer, that would have been something that I would have done. Uh, just for that reason. Selfishly, you get the benefits of learning about your own body, which that's a kind of like a no-brainer, but then what that's going to do for you as a coach you and trainer. You set yourself aside from all the competition. Yes. You provide better service. Your clients get better results. It's just, it's such a no-brainer. I mean, the, if you're not thinking constantly about how to better educate yourself as a trainer and how to like incorporate a bigger network of people that that's can it. help, then, you know, what are you doing? If you're, as a trainer, you understand exercise, you understand technique and workout programming. You understand basics of nutrition. So that's your expertise. But you need people around you that you can work with that can solve problems that you can't. And when you can do that for your clients, mm -hmm. you become invaluable. You become – they come to you for all the issues that the traditional medicine can't fix because they say, do you know somebody that can help me with this? And then you have somebody, and it makes you just so valuable. Yep. Our next caller is Nate from Utah. Nate, what's happening? How can we help you? Good. How are you guys? Good, good. Doing good, man. good, man. Good, good. This is kind of surreal. I've, I've been listening to you guys for a couple of years now, and it's, uh, it's pretty awesome to see you guys in person or at least through the camera. <laughs> cool. Thanks, man. <laughs> yeah. So just to give you some uh, backstory before I ask my questions. Um, so about six years ago, I kind of was super depressed, super overweight. Um, I'm five foot eight and I was 240 pounds. So, you know, pretty, pretty big, um, decided to, you know, enough was enough and I wanted to change. So I started getting into lifting. Uh, I started getting into running and I ended up losing, I ended up getting down to about 195 pounds, uh, just watching what I was eating, um, doing that, all that type of stuff. Kind of yo-yoed back and forth for about six years. Um, started getting into endurance races, uh, half marathons, marathons, kind of doing all that stuff. It, while I, you know, in between that, I was kind of lifting as well. So 
keeping that in the mix. Um, so fast forward until now, which brings me, you know, to my question. Um, about a year ago, I decided to, I wanted to kind of step it up a little bit just cause I'm super goal oriented. Um, and I signed up for, well, I hired a coach to do a bodybuilding competition. Um, so I started with him in October of last year and we did about, so about nine months and kind of went through that whole entire process, the prep, um, the grueling, all that stuff. And I, yeah, I competed June 10th. So about four, about four weeks ago. Um, with that being said, it, the, the prep messed me up pretty bad. Um, I got down to, so again, I was five, eight when I, when I first started with this prep, I was 196 pounds. Um, I got down to, so the day of my show, I weighed in at 169 pounds. Um, and I was eating 1400 calories, 14 to 1500 calories a day, doing two hours plus cardio a day. Um, it was, as you guys obviously know, it was, it was pretty grueling and took, uh, it, it taxed me pretty good. So, um, anyway, I got on stage, I, I competed, I checked off that goal. Well now, which, you know, brings me to my question. Um, my coach kind of just left me high and dry afterwards. Um, didn't help me through the reverse process. Didn't help me through that whole entire, you know, that, that period where from what I was reading and from my, the research I was doing is extremely pertinent, especially getting back to, to healthy, you know, hormone levels and all that stuff. So, um, I did my own research again, you know, internet can tell you all sorts of, all sorts of stuff. Um, and from what I was, from what I researched, the studies that they did studies on, you know, going right back to what you started prep at. So for me starting prep, I was eating about 2,500 calories, um, right at the beginning. Um, so I kind of pretty quickly went back to that. Well, as you guys can probably already know and already tell or whatever, but I, I ended up putting on some, some weight pretty quickly. So just to give you some context, I was 169 pounds, obviously, like I said, and now I'm sitting at about 180 pounds. Um, the, the crazy thing, obviously I, I put some, I put some weight on the crazy thing about it is that, you know, you know it's not super crazy cause the, you know, I obviously know the hormones are a lot better. Um, but I feel phenomenal in the gym right now. Like, I, I mean, I feel like I've never felt before, which is, which is pretty crazy. So I guess my question for you is, do, where, I guess, where do I start? Right. Do, do I go back and kind of like, cause, cause my, my big thing is I want to, I want to be, you know, I don't have any plans of competing again right now in the future, but, um, I want to stay lean, right. I don't ever want to get up to that point. I'm having a hard time mentally seeing myself the way that I am right now. So, so, uh, 169 to 180 is actually not that bad. I mean, okay. it's 11 pounds. Uh, and it may feel that way cause you were so lean and so shredded, but you gotta factor in half of that's water. Yeah. Water depletion, carbohydrate depletion. Um, you're going to yeah. put a quick five to six on that's healthy and good right away. So even if you put a couple extra pounds on, it's not bad. I, I've seen people put 30 pounds on bro in a week. Like that's, that's, yeah, yeah, that's where it gets really it's bad. Crazy. So I actually think that you're not that bad. Now I wouldn't have taken you from 1500 back to your show prep, 2400 cut. I would have actually went from 1500 to 1700 to 1800 to, I would have, I would have walked you up that way while simultaneously backing you out of the cardio. So like we might, okay. we would probably start at, let's say, you know, 2000 calories and then, you know, take carve off an hour of cardio and we'd stay there for a little bit to let your body level out. And then I, would you know, ask you to bump your calories, another hundred to 200 calories, and then drop off another half hour cardio. So I, I would, that's kind of how I would do it. And we, in okay. there is, there is no, the reason why there's so much damn information on the internet, there's no perfect 
right answer because it's it's going to be individual to the person. And this is where the the coaching process with me would be like, okay, how do you feel? How are we looking? Are we not putting on too much weight? And as long as we're not putting on excessive weight uh, as we reverse diet out, I'm going to just keep etching those calories up and and start to slowly back out all the cardio that you're doing. Um, you are you did highlight something that. I've talked about on the show many times and uh, Sal's experienced this because he's dieted so extreme before too. It's the feeling of refeeding the body after it's been depleted for so long that is the most anabolic feel. It feels more anabolic than steroids does to me. It's the wildest feeling. And so that's, I mean, and I think a lot of that is just your body thanking you <laughs> and telling you like, this is, I, I needed that. I needed to be reward. fed. And, yeah. And it, and it's just, you're primed to, to build right now. So you're in a good place. I don't think you're doing a bad job either, bro. So, I mean, go easy on yourself. The fact that you put uh, 11 pounds, that's not that big of a deal. Yeah. Nate, are you still doing all that cardio? Um, I'm not. I, I pretty quickly dropped it off just because, you know, time commitments. I'm actually, um, I'm an electrician, so I'm out in the heat. I'm out in all my feet walking. Yeah. I mean, I, I was walking without the cardio about 10,000 steps a day. Uh -huh. Um and then added the cardio on top of it. It was just extra. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so bodybuilding coaches are the worst uh, coaches that are out there. Just, <laughs> just for health, they're just the absolute worst. Uh, yeah. But you said something, and I, so I want to help you out, and and, and I want to work with you um, r rather than trying to work against your nature. So, first off, we have a reverse dieting guide. I'll send that to you. So it's kind of breaks right. down what a reverse diet, you know, it kind of generally should look like. So I'll send that to you. But you mentioned how you're goal oriented. You did endurance running, then you went to bodybuilding. It sounds like you really have you really enjoy training for a goal or a target. Is that is that correct? Absolutely. Okay. I want you to try a powerlifting competition. And I'm going to send you Maps okay. Powerlift. And I want you to find a powerlifting coach. Powerlifting coaches are a million times better than bodybuilding coaches because powerlifting coaches, they got to show objective numbers going up. They're not all great, but they're they're usually okay or good, whereas bodybuilding coaches tend to be crap and tend to hurt people. So you can find yourself a powerlifting coach. I'm going to send you mass powerlift. That's your, that'll be your program if you don't get a coach. Find a competition. Find a weight class that you feel like you want to compete in. That'll help you maintain a relatively lean body. Um, because uh, I know there's a, there's a whole like, um, you know, belief or, or, or view on powerlifters that get fat. Really that's powerlifters in the unlimited weight category, but every other powerlifter has to train within a category. They have to control their body weight. So if you're competing in the, you know, 180 to 185 cats, like you can't go above 185, otherwise you're in a new weight category. I think powerlifting and a powerlifting competition is the best way to get your mentality to switch over to something a little bit better. And and, and you okay. and, and you're going to get you have to get stronger with powerlifting. That's the goal. And why is that good? Because it's hard to underfeed your body and overtrain and get stronger. It's almost impossible. So I think that's going to put you in a better direction in terms of getting okay. you out of this 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 mental state that you that the bodybuilding puts you in. I I love that yeah. advice. Even if you don't want to actually do a competition i think that advice is still good like to yeah. at least go through the program and and pretend like you're going to do a competition i right. think that's a, i think that's a good place to to focus and train and i think you're gonna see lots of benefits as you're seeing already right now being fed again like your strength mm -hmm. probably feels amazing your lifts and workouts probably feel oh, great yeah. great time to you know really focus on getting strong in the gym so i, I love that advice I think yeah. that's great advice even if you like i said even if you're not you know, excited about going and doing a competition you don't necessarily have to do that just follow the program as if you were that's right Awesome. So would you guys, would you guys recommend like upping the calories into that as well, or just kind of stay, I mean, what would you recommend for that? Uh, it depends. I think you're okay. Actually, I think your jump was okay. Not that I would have done it that way, but based on okay. what you're saying, as long as you don't, okay. as long as you don't keep seeing dramatic, like if you put on another 10 pounds this week, then I'd be like, okay, we yeah, went maybe too fast. A little bit. But are you, is it good food or is it bad food? It, so obvious, like right after I had, you know, all these cravings, whatever I did have like a couple of cheat meals. So then I went right back into, you know, meal prep, oh, good. weigh in type stuff, which, you know, which has been good. But I have, like I introduced, like right at the end of that prep for the last three weeks, I was like zero carbs. So nothing completely depleted. Um, and then I went to having, you know, introducing carbs and, in, you know, all six of my meals, which then 
obviously made me fill out, made me look fluffy, you know, makes me a little bit self-conscious, which I know is a Dude. little bit of body dysmorphia and stuff like that. But Nate, I, 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 the, I, out of the 11 pounds that you gained, now that I know you went zero carbs, yeah, like it's a, it's eight all, or nine of it is just glycogen water. It's all good, water. bro. It's all good. Yeah, that's yeah. why I said when you when you first told me the amount you went on, yeah, I'm like, but that's zero so, to yeah. that, pff, yeah. I could make I could go fifteen pound swing with zero to carbs. I could easy and it not be any body fat. So, um, okay. I would keep your calories where they're at. Keep them where they're at. Okay. Do maps power lift and then continue to reverse diet from there. So maybe for the next few weeks, couple weeks, keep it at twenty four hundred calories. And then read the guide. It'll, it'll encourage you to add 100 to 200 calories a week and then do that and, and see where it takes you. I bet you'll probably get around to close to 3,000 calories without any substantial fat mm -hmm. gain, um, but some really good strength gains. That's when we know we're doing really good is if you can yeah. get through that that MAPS strong program or, or MAPS power lift program and you've increased calories and we really mm -hmm. haven't put on much body fat at all. Totally. Awesome. Sounds great. You got it, man. Thanks for calling in. Hey, by the way. Yeah, thanks, thank you, guys. Thanks for the work that you do. You're going to be one of the last uh, few employed people when the AI takes over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love your guys' conversation about that, so it keeps me motivated. <laughs> yeah, dude. Right on, Nate. Stay strong, easy, brother. Man. Okay. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Isn't that funny? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> AI won't be doing his job for a little while. Oh, no, you know what I'm saying? No, no. I Man. love that advice, though, Sal. Yeah, Although when we so were in Utah, great. since he is in Utah, remember when we saw that was the first time I ever seen one of those dirt compactors that was all robot controlled? Oh, really? Yeah. We remember when, like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. When we last time we went to our Park yeah, City the, place. Right. And they were talking about somebody still has to operate. Yeah, yeah. It. And so yeah. It's, yeah. Like, it's either you're going to be a button pusher or you're going to be the one actually like working yeah. on things. But. No, I think I think if you used to goal oriented, like go power lift and, and get out of bodybuilding, man. There's very few people. I know this is going to piss people. Man. Off. There's very few people that should go do a bodybuilding Again, competition. Again, going from like, and I get it, you know, it's like you lose weight, you get excited that your body's changing, and now, no, and I'm a competition kind of guy. You go, and, but that's like the last competition I would have sent him to. You, you know, know, this is why I know that I get a lot of flack, and so do anybody who can. Comp says competing is a sport, but this is why I like to compare it to a sport because I would never recommend a sport for somebody to get healthy and in shape. No, it's no. just not a great approach to doing that. And there's a lot, and, and there's a lot of competitiveness in within competing. And so it, there's a lot of things are similar about sport. Yes, I know you could prance around in a in a fucking you know board shorts, and it's not <laughs> hard and tough, and you're not slamming. Like yeah, it's a it's a different type of a competition, and so it gets a lot of shit and grief from people that are like real athletes because you don't have to be athletic to do a, a bodybuilding competition. But as far as the extreme aspects of it, the consistency, the discipline, sure. the unhealthy side of it, it's very much like a sport. Yep. And when you're trying to be fit and healthy, Listen. it is actually not. People think it's a good route because you you lose body fat no. percentage. So people think, oh, this is a good way it's, to get healthy. It's not. I'm going to tell you, I'm yeah. going to say this right now. If you want to sign up for something that involves strength training or lifting weights because you want a goal, you are far better off signing up for a powerlifting competition than you are a stage presentation competition 100%. like bodybuilding physique or bikini. And for people who are like, yeah, but what about body fat gain? Besides the unlimited weight classes, you're going to have to maintain your body weight or you could drop weight and get into a better body weight class uh, because getting a lighter one often makes you more competitive. Powerlifting will serve people even so much still, better. Think about them starting with powerlifting to then go transition to bikini or, or to uh, bodybuilding. That's it's right. just like, uh, it's just a better route in general. Everything we talk about in terms of like building muscle to start with is the focus. Our next caller is Connor from Ohio. Connor, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey guys, um, first off, I'm gonna give the obligatory thank you. Um, I appreciate you guys answering my email. Um, and I found you guys a little over a year ago and you guys changed my complete perspective on fitness. You guys changed any, everything from my workout plan, the way I eat, everything. I thank you guys for that. Awesome, awesome thank man. you. Um, so my question revolves around band training. I started working out about two, three years ago, and I did mostly body weight. And then I tried switching to weights, but didn't have the room or the money to really afford a home gym. So I um, looked into loop style resistance bands and fell in love with them. Um, and I found you guys based off of the videos you guys have. And my question revolves around rep ranges with the bands. 
I know you guys talk about going to failure when training bands, whether it's every day, three days a week, et cetera. Um, and I was one, I know you guys talk about, ooh, excuse me. I know you guys talk about um, more reps to failure, how the studies on that. But I also know you guys talk about going to low rep ranges as well. And I'm just confused on where to go with bands. Okay. Um, the reason why higher reps, uh, I, we, we tend to advocate for, and now higher reps, like 12 plus, not necessarily 20 mm -hmm. right. to failure is just the safety component, the form component. It, it, there tends to be not as much volume in the lower rep because you're doing lower volume anyway, typically when you go to failure, that being said, eight reps, uh, 10 reps, even six reps, the failure, totally fine. Just make sure your form and technique are good. Do you have MAPS bands, by the way, or what are you following for your band program? Um, actually, I went back to you guys' earlier episodes, um, episode 1380. You guys give um, a band, that's a band only episode. You guys give a full body workout with 10 exercises. You guys say do three times a week, um, uh, every set to failure. Yeah. And three sets per exercise. Yeah. That's I've a, been trying to follow that. That's a good workout, but it's not as good as Maps Bands. Maps Bands, we fully programmed out. We yeah, phased we'll send, it. That, send that over to you, yeah, bro. We'll, yeah, we'll let's to we're you. gonna send that to you and that's gonna that's gonna kick ass for you. And then the other thing, I know okay. you have limited space. I think it would be wise to invest in a couple adjustable dumbbells or a kettlebell or two. And then I think it would okay. also be wise for you to incorporate some body weight movement or map suspension. Yeah. Oh, I think, oh, I think or a suspension map trainer. Suspension, yeah, you can get a suspension true. trainer for 50 to a hundred bucks. We have mm -hmm. them on our site and mm -hmm. we'll send you the program. So with maps bands, we'll also send you a map suspension. So you got that program for oh. free and literally all okay. you, all you need is a suspension trainer. And I actually think you can progress a lot from th oh, those yeah. two, those two programs. Reps with suspension training. Yeah, th those yeah. two programs right there, you could put on some serious you can muscle. Do more, and that's the thing is the tool itself is more conducive towards like certain types of training. So, you know, the bands, if, if you start to get into low reps and you want to have that kind of like heavy resistance, a lot of times it's really challenging and difficult for people to get into the right position and hold their posture correctly yeah. uh, because it's, yeah, that, that, that tension and that force is really going to pull you all over the place. And so, um, you know, in terms of like getting an effective, efficient workout, that's why we tend to structure it a little more towards, you know, the 10 to 15 kind of range there. So uh, you, get, you get a more effective workout that way. But yeah, um, the suspension trainer, you can. There, there's there's ways to, to get provide angles and gravitational forces against you where you can actually go down in reps and, and, and struggle through that a little bit more. Yeah, I'm so glad you guys said. I totally forgot. Yeah, the suspension those, would be perfect. And not that not and the only reason why I interrupted is because I don't disagree, by the way, with so like obviously at one point you would love to get some dumbbells, you would love to get a barbell, yeah. or you would love to get a gym membership where you can go to that. But if I'm thinking What's the least expensive, least amount of space, yeah. like best thing I can do to progress you? Bands and suspension trainer. I can totally. get a, I can get a lot done with bands and suspension trainer, uh, and spend little to no money, and then and in little to no space. So those those two would be a great place for you to hang out until you get to a place where you can get a gym membership or get a good you yep. know free weight setup. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I literally work out like right in front of my front door, and that's the only space I need. Okay. Yeah, like okay. I do everything there. This will be perfect and it, for you. It works. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, this awesome. is awesome. This is perfect for you, bro. We're gonna send that over to you. Okay. Um, and I do have one more small question. It's not related to band training at all. Okay. Um, and I'll give you a little bit of context. Um, for a, uh, six months now, I've been dealing with a little bit of low back pain, and it happened when I was doing deadlifts with bands, I was doing conventional deadlifts and I was doing high reps. I got my first set done fine and it was 20 reps. And then I did six and I had to stop. And then usually the pain starts in like in the morning, like when I get out of bed, but as I walk and move throughout the day, it goes away. And I've been told it's like my piriformis, but mm. I'm not exactly too sure. I, I think this has a lot to do with what Justin said. When you do low okay. rep, reps with like a move, like I'm like I'm not a fan of. Even though you can do deadlifts with bands, and it's possible, right? We've programmed that. Yep. It's it, it's definitely not my favorite way to to progress somebody on deadlifting because of that exact oh. reason right there. It's our, deadlifting is already a very technical exercise. 
And then when you got like a heavy resistance band that's pulling on you while you go through the reps, it's just really tough to keep very yeah. strict. Because the resistance is yeah. variable as you're doing the set. Yeah. And yeah. so I think the point that Justin was making earlier about why low reps with bands are just not ideal is the mm -hmm. way it's pulling on you. And deadlifts is, is probably the the most difficult exercise to progressively overload with just bands. Yeah. So I, I think you need to, to drop that. And I think you need to just follow what we got going on in the suspension for stuff yeah. like that. I don't think it's your piriformis, by the way, because you don't feel it in your like butt cheek, right? You don't feel it down your leg. You said it's in your back like it's the middle of like my lower back all the way at the bottom of my spine where like my glute connects and every now and then i like feel it a little bit on one side of my glute but other than that that's it oh well then it might be the piriformis if mm -hmm. that's the case so um I, there's okay. a seated chair stretch i think i did we have uh, it on mind pump tv is it mind pump TV? yeah you've done so there's some good stuff on right. i've seen that all right yeah, yeah i've yeah. seen exactly that do some of those stretches and see if that doesn't alleviate it a little bit yeah okay all right man well thank you guys all right Connor. you got it bro thanks for calling in yeah thank you goodbye i mean for overall fitness uh, uh alternating between suspension and band training is yeah. good yeah, that's just it. to be efficient and, like you said, economical, and yeah. like he only has that devoted space. Yep. So I think that's probably the perfect recipe. Yeah, I wouldn't need to add anything. I mean, I, I mean, of course, you, you want as many tools as possible, but if that yeah. remains to a limitation, we love barbells, it. but it's not always that accessible. No, no. I mean, I think that's the the ultimate goal. At one point, hopefully, he. I mean, he seems like he's young, right? He's twenty something years old. He, I don't know if he's still in school or what, but it, you know, hopefully, at one point, he can get himself a gym membership mm -hmm. and then follow something like anabolic if he really wants to pack on muscle, but. I mean, with bands and suspension at his age, where he's at. Oh, he's I mean, fine. Yeah, he, uh, can, he, do, can, he stay can do a lot of great work there. Awesomely fit. Our next caller is Leonard from Scotland. Leonard, Yo. what's happening? What's happening? Hey, guys. What up? Man, this is, this is quite surreal. It's like being in the Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> no. Which pill are you going to take? Both. <laughs> yeah, both at <laughs> See once. See what happens. <laughs> wow. Well, how can we help you, man? <laughs> yeah. Um, so... I got some basic questions and to start off the first question, I'll just give you a, maybe a little bit of background as to why I'm asking it. And that's in terms of my fitness background. So about 2007, so about when I was 15, I started training with just using my body the whole way for a pretty long time. Um, up to the year of 2021, I was pretty much doing body weight training at home every morning, uh, like for an hour. It wasn't really until 2021 in January where I got into a proper structured strength training program by Mind Valley, which taught me this principle of having a structure, even this thing of a rest day, um, to sort of structure my program much better. And later on, I discovered you guys, thanks to Max Luger. We are big shout out to him. Yeah. I love him. <laughs> Good buddy. Um, yeah. And uh, dived into some of your programs as well, like anabolic and aesthetics. And I was really impressed by sort of strength gains I gained from them by having adapted them uh, into my practice using bands mainly. Um, because the thing is, I've, uh, I only have bands really because of my circumstances of having always needing to be mobile and not having really access to a gym regularly. So I don't really have haven't really worked with weights as much as that. So my question really along to that line is what are the benefits and trade-offs between bands and weights really? Because I've uh, thought that I probably gained some new, more benefits with weights. Um, you guys once talked about bands in a different podcast episode, which was really insightful, but I'm not quite sure where the benefits and the trade-offs are between the two. If I go one or the other. Good question. Yeah. Okay. So, um, off, I mean, just right off the gates, bands, the resistance becomes, uh, stronger the further you stretch it out. So the resistance you get from a band is very different, um, from a fluid. It just feels different and different resistance types. Um, if they're introduced as novel stimulus, they can cause, uh, changes in the muscle to happen relatively rapidly. Meaning if you always train with a particular type of resistance and then you switch to a different style, you'll start to see um, some results. So this is true if you start with weights and go to bands and vice versa. Right. Bands are very versatile. I can attach them at different points. I can do all kinds of different exercises. 
Um, they don't take up much space. The problem, the, the disadvantage of bands is some of the most effective, just gross motor movements yeah. are not really done really well with bands. Like the a compound squat, movements are kind of tough. Yeah. Squat, deadlift, bench press, or, you know, um, you, yeah. you, you're not going to be able to really do those like you can with, uh, free weights. Free weights, uh, mimic the real world more than bands. When you lift something in the real world, it's a free weight. Um, so that's it. Heavy weight, low reps tends to be better um, with free weights. If you get really strong, bands can be actually challenging to work with. Like if you get somebody who could, let's say, you know, row three hundred pounds, and trying to find a band that can that, with that kind of resistance, it actually gets a bit unwieldy and actually dangerous. Believe it or not, uh, with bands. So um, the pluses and minuses, though, with both of them, uh, really work well together. I mean, we never, we, you know. Uh, some circumstances, bands are better and others, free weights are better. In an ideal situation, you do both and you go through cycles uh, of both. So you know, I hope that, hope that kind of answers your question. Yeah, a simpler way to put yeah. this is you can be, uh, you can get incredible shape and be healthy and very fit just by doing body weight and band stuff. But if you are trying to progress, build more muscle, get leaner, progress where you're currently at right now, <laughs> one of the fastest ways you could do that is by doing a novel stimulus. A novel stimulus in this situation with you will be free weights because you do mostly bands and body weight. You just simply training with free weights is going to be novel and your body is going to respond much quicker than any sort of band exercise since you've been doing that so frequently for the last year to two years. So, but if you're happy where you're at physique wise and health wise, yeah. there's nothing wrong with doing bands and body weight for the rest of your life. There's many yeah. people that. That's uh, mm. that's all they do, and they're they're in great great shape, uh, but but it's it'll be much faster and easier for you to progress by switching to a novel stimulus. And bands, uh, so each each are different tools, right? So and you have to kind of mm. highlight what they do best. And one of them, you know, with the bands, they're they're better for recovery. So therefore, you know, building up more volume and frequency and kind of leaning in heavier into that side of, uh, you know, the attributes is kind of where we structure with maps bands, because, you know, it's, it's going to be able to provide that type of stimulus to your muscles, which also produces, you know, building muscles, but that's a different uh, attribute than say, like I'm lifting, you know, heavy weights and just focusing on those compound lifts, which actually, I'm my force output is so high that I'm actually going to require more rest and recovery to then uh, allow my central nervous system to perform at that high level again. And yeah. so you have to alternate that and be more conscious of how you structure that versus with bands. It's like, you know, we, we can, we can go and perform a lot of these exercises pretty frequently and get a totally different stimulus. Yeah. I mean, look, they're all tools and the more tools you have, uh, the 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 uh -huh. better you'll be able to work, the better, the easier. That's all. You know. Yeah, but can you do it with less tools? You can. You totally can. Mm. Uh, wow, that's pretty insightful responses to that. Um, that actually gets me to since Justin just mentioned map spans as well. Um, the thing is with map spans uh, because I compared it a little bit to anabolic and aesthetics whose philosophy I quite well understood with the compact movements and then going to more isolated movements, which mm -hmm. sort of gets much easier and much more comfortable than towards the end. But by maps, bands, it's, I, I don't see this sort of structure in, in a way is akin to that, what I've seen anabolic and aesthetics because the exercises just because of my background, probably I'd lack the understanding on the sort of way that you structured it. And the second phase looks a little bit more like a hypertrophy or endurance phase, really, rather than a strength phase. Yeah. Are you? Yeah, very. Yeah. Di they're different. They're very That's why it, for a reason it's programmed different because it's different. You do know? you work? Do you work in the fitness and health space? What do you mean by your background? Uh, not at the moment. Um, the thing, uh, it's an endeavor that I have actually to move into into the personal training space, actually. Um, where I want to look into certification as well. So at the moment, I'm sort of building, first of all, my own confidence. I even coaching my parents. Uh, like my mom is very eager with strength training at the moment. And she's very, she's doing really nice progress from coaching. Uh, so are you an engineer right now? Cause you mentioned your background that, that you're, you know, yeah, considering is, background, you, right. are, are you an engineer? Do you work with like a lot of numbers, numbers. and plans? 
Well, I'm a physicist uh, originally by background. Makes sense. Yep. Okay. okay, definitely. So, um, workout programming does have a structure and a sequence that you'll start to understand over time. It's far more complex yeah. than it seems on the surface. What you're identifying in anabolic and in aesthetic are the very obvious um, signs of some of the programming. But there's a lot more that goes into exercise programming. And this is why strength coaches, you know, really good mm. ones uh, can be so valuable versus people that just understand how to work out. So we have to consider the type of resistance, the exercise selection, the order, how the days follow the each other. of the exercises together. Tempo yeah. and sets and reps wow. and what the whole picture looks like. And uh, you learn this through um, lots and lots and lots of experience. Mm -hmm. So a simple analogy to this is building your body is like building a house and the tools mm -hmm. that you use to build a house. You don't use a hammer the same way that you use a screwdriver, the same way you use a saw. All of them are valuable. Yeah. All of them are valuable towards building the house, but you're not going to use the hammer the same way you use the saw. But it's even, so, it's even, it's okay. There's, let me add to that. It's like building a house, but then sometimes you're building the house on granite. On Other times you're building it on a slant. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or you're building it in the rain. You have more workers, less workers, right. different types of wood, different, you know, so there's so many variables that go into programming. I mean, and, and I, we didn't even write a program for an individual. That's where it gets really crazy. Yeah, We're writing a program exactly. uh -huh. for a general audience, which is actually exponentially easier than it is when you're writing it for an individual. And it gets even more challenging when you're working with more advanced individuals. Like if I have to create a program for a high, a high level competitor, I got to re the programming gets very, very detailed versus a beginner works very simple. So if you're trying to figure this out, Following the programs is step one. Mm -hmm. Step two, getting certifications. Step three, training other people. And then through experience, it'll start to reveal itself uh, over time. So, um, and you, you sound very analytical. You'll figure it out, but mm -hmm. it's going to take some time for sure. Yeah, I don't expect that going to be like a flash of light moment, really, <laughs> in any sense. Um it, uh, it is a long endeavor and I have to also learn with success and mistakes um, along the process to make the best of it. Yeah. That's and right. I'm going to make it sound even harder. Mm -hmm. Then you got you to gotta yeah. gotta account for human behavior. And this yes. is where shit gets real weird. Uh, so, oh, yeah. Fact, yeah. <laughs> so good luck, yeah. my friend. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know that feeling. Uh, actually, I have a certification as a functional medicine health coach. Uh, okay. So I have a little bit of nice. experience in terms of coaching and understanding the behavior of uh, yeah. people and um even committing myself or even others is interesting let me put it this way awesome well thank <laughs> you hey Leonard, are you uh are you in our uh private forum the mind pump private forum mm, no i'm not i'm gonna have doug give you access i'd love to, to hear your process especially if you're gonna get into being a coach and stuff like that there's a ton yeah. of other trainers and coaches inside the forum including us so we can hear your hear, hear your progress and how you're doing wow Wow, that's actually awesome. Whoa. Um, yeah, uh, that's really great because I can just bombard my next few questions in there uh, from there on. <laughs> there you rather go, than you keep go. you guys tied up. I mean, it's like almost lunchtime by you guys. So That's right. Yeah, yeah, I'm, that's I'm right. getting hungry. Awesome. <laughs> well, thanks for calling in, man. We appreciate the support. Yeah, I really appreciate the, the support from you guys as well. Listen pretty much almost every day. Just listen to the one that you put out right now. I'm starting off with it. Topping on beef as the best protein source, mm. which I just had today. This lunch is a really big portion, so it makes me even more satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. Thanks, man. Right on, Leonard. All right. Thanks, guys. Take it easy. easy. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, just, just you know, predict. <laughs> you just had to take my simple analogy and make it fucking you know confusing, why? right? <laughs> just yeah. add, add, add. Well, here's why. Because, yeah, because well, he's a scientist. You're, you're right, but I mean, even here, I think my point was enough for him to get like, oh, okay, I get it. It's different yeah. tools. Well, so here's you just why. had to throw it. Oh, it could be on a slant. You have three guys. <laughs> yeah. like, well, you know why I said that? Because he, he's a he's a scientist. <laughs> and, and He's trying to figure it out. Here's like, what scientists do. It. This is what they do. You know, he's the noise the shit of us with yeah. the, the science people in the I fitness know. space is they look at the studies. Yes. Okay, you can have all the studies you want, but we're not training robots. 
we're training humans. You throw right. in human psychology, and it's now not ones it's, and zeros. It's not going to work like no, that. No, it's not like Newtonian physics where you have a formula and then this is how it works. You're also working with a human who is fucking complex and weird and changes all the time, all that stuff. Um, so programming is is not necessarily an exact. So there are components that are yeah we have like there's laws of specificity there's the law of thermodynamics there are some laws in within programming and building you know a physique and stuff like that but then there's so many other factors that play a role and it's not as simple as two plus one of my favorite examples is this is they'll say uh how many times you know the, the the frequency a muscle is trained doesn't matter if their volume is equated for the problem is in application when people train more frequently and split up the sets, they tend to do more volume because they're fresher and stronger. So it's never equated for. No. So in the real world and application, we look at human behavior, it's actually better to break up workouts and to train more frequently. Than and they to adhere do it. to it better too. That's, so, that, that's the other part. Absolutely. Look, if you like Mind Pump, if you want some workouts for real, real cheap, go to Mind Pump Media on Instagram. Very inexpensive. Under $5 a month, you get a workout every single week programmed by us. You can also find all of us on Instagram. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump DeStefano. And Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. 